The dark past has taught us Sing a song Full of the hope that the present has brought us Facing the rising sun of a new day begun let us march on till victory is won. Thank you. And of course, we'll be here for you. Football on BET tonight from the RCA Dome in Indianapolis. One of black college football's most prestigious events, the Circle City Classic, featuring the Tennessee State Tigers and the Bison of Howard University. Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is our first broadcast since the terrorist attacks of September 11th. And before we move on, the first and foremost thing on our minds is our well wishes to the friends and the families of the victims of New York, Washington, D.C., and just outside of Pittsburgh. And though our lives have been affected, we will not let it affect what we do each and every day in our lives. And one of those things, of course, is play football, which is why we bring you this pretty good game today between the Tigers and the Bison. Last year, both teams finished at 3-8, and eight, both expected to turn things around this year. The Tigers have done so. In the Sheridan poll among all black college football teams, Tennessee State comes in ranked number five. In Division I AA, they are in the top 25, ranked number 22. As for Howard, well, Howard is going to have to start turning things around. I mean, it is going to get really bad for them if they don't get a victory today as they come in at 1-3, one 1-2 in, in, in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. And with that having been said, we turn our attention to one of my broadcast partners here, the former quarterback of the Oilers and the Eagles, Don McPherson, and Don, when you talk about Howard, they've got their hands full against this Tennessee State team, so one would assume they need to control tempo in this. They certainly do. They need to control tempo and do something they haven't done this season so far, and that is sustain long drives and control the line of scrimmage. With that, they're going to look for a strong play from the offensive line, and that unit is led by Marcus Ogden. He is the younger brother of Jonathan Ogden, the all-pro from the Baltimore Ravens. But don't expect Howard to play a concern conservative football game. Quarterback Donald Clark will go up top and go deep. And when he does, he's going to look for his wide receiver, Javante Philpott. Philpott leads the MEAC with seven touchdowns this year, and his coach, Steve Wilson, doesn't believe anyone can cover this kid one-on-one. -on -one. See, now we can talk about offense all we want to about Howard, but really, the key to this club is the defense. They returned 11 starters of a year ago, and yet they played a 43 last year. They switched things around. They're now going with a 34? Yes, and the 34 means that the linebackers are going to have to be in the backfield in the pass rush. Fortunately for Howard, they have two good ones. Obira has made the move from defensive end to linebacker, and and he comes off the corner with a burst. And on the other side is the 2000 MEAC Defensive Player of the Year, Tracy White, 13 tackles for a loss. This kid's a great ball player. Yeah, <laughs> raising havoc all through the Mideastern Athletic Conference. You know, I said raising havoc for a reason. That's because we got the big boy in the booth with us again who raises havoc each and every week. And that is the former All-Pro of the Dallas Cowboys, Nate Newton. Nate, when you talk about Tennessee State, they, quite frankly, are very balanced. They will get it done in the air. They will get it done on the ground. And the reason for that is their quarterback, Shannon Harris. 
Harris. Shannon Harris is very efficient. He's a great quarterback. He's a great leader. He doesn't make any mistakes. He's out of 109 passes. He's only thrown one interception. But you know what? The best kept secret is that left tackle, <laughs> Lawrence Smith. He's a monster. Number 62 is all everything. All America, all conference. He's been invited to the East West Shrine game. You can look for some dynamite things happening with this kid. And yet it's the defense also of Tennessee State that really anchors them. It has held opponents to an average of just nine points per ball game. And a lot of that has to do with the play of their linebacker. But Walter Reese is a great kid, number 40, as all-conference. He was all-conference player of the week last week, and you look for great things out of him. But you know, they got a secondary that's led by Eric Joyce, number 21. Didn't play at all last year. And he could have been a, a fifth-round pick. The pros say that. But the big thing with him is he's got to cover Javante Philpott, and that will be a matchup to watch. Oh, I can already hear Nate keeping school between those that's two. Right. Nearly two decades of football here at the Circle City Classic. They have been playing since 1984 and have sold out this event in seven of the last ten games. And they have averaged 54,000 plus at all those games during that span. So we expect a packed house tonight for the Tigers and the Bison. Today's Southwest Airlines Black College Football Circle City Classic is brought to you by Budweiser with the crisp clean, refreshing taste you'll find in no other beer. Indianapolis, Indiana, the Circle City Classic, the 18th Circle City Classic. First meeting between these two football teams, Tennessee State and Howard University. And while one team coach by James Reese in just his second year, six and eight, looking to surpass his number of wins of a season ago in which he won just three games. They've won three already this year, looking to stay undefeated at 4-0. He's going against a veteran and Steve Wilson. In his 13th season, the winningest coach in school history at 77 and 61. And he has been very successful here at the Circle City Classic. This club coming in at 2-1 in Circle City Classic football. TSU won the toss and deferred. So Howard University will receive the football first. Jay Colbert, one of the deep men for Howard University, also back deep is Fred Turner. And folks, we are underway. A very short kick in this one. And it is taken by Turner. Turner dragging a couple of tackles with him and gets outside the 35-yard line, making the stop with Scott Cunningham. So here's your starting quarterback, Donald Clark, the junior from Statesville, North Carolina, 6'5", 225-pounder, coming in completing 55% of his passes, 632 yards, six touchdown passes, four INTs, and his club will start things off. First and 10, ball just outside the 36-yard line. Single setback is Tariq Rice. Probably the best all-round athlete on the football team, they tell us. And they're going to give it to Rice immediately. Looking for a hole. Got some good blocks still on his feet. And gets out to about the 43-yard line. As we take a look now at our starting lineups, brought to you by a Budweiser. Marcus Ogden, the younger brother of Jonathan Ogden, the offensive lineman, Vincent Wiggins, Mark Owens, and Brown Hopkins picking up that offensive line for Howard University. Rice gets the start and tailback, Donovan Burton, Kevin Simmons, Javante Philpott with seven touchdown receptions. As Don told you, at the top is the other wideout. Second down. They try to go to Rice and nothing going this time. The linebacker, actually the defensive end, Desmond Scantling, is there to make the play. We take a look now at our Budweiser starting lineups on the defensive side. Scantling you saw. Look at the experience with Danny Robertson and Orlando Dotson. Both three-year lettermen coming in. Walter Reese, the leading tackler on this team. Jermaine Beal has played all three linebacker spots. Giddens forced to start last year as a freshman. Got invaluable time and Marcus Stevens, he is your leading tackler for the Tigers of Tennessee State. It's third down now for the Bison. Call it six. Shotgun formation for Clark. He's going to show for the out pattern. Pass is too high, intended for Simmons. That'll make it fourth down. 
head off Teddy Throw, though. I mean, nice protection by the front line there. Marcus Ogden is a guy we're going to look at a lot today to see what he's going to do. And that was an impressive defensive series for Tennessee State. They came out, first couple of plays, and stuffing their linebackers in the middle, forcing play outside. That earlier play with, uh, with Scanlon was a nice play. The coaches say he's, a, he's a, one of the better leaders on the team, and he's an excellent run stopper. Carlos Wright back to receive the punt, standing at his 20-yard oh. line. They like to put two guys back there on the punt return, but they went back to one because of some blocked punts and not getting enough blocks. And this time, he gets no blocks and picks up maybe two yards on the return. Well, that's the thing. When you're back there by yourself, you really have no help. They actually look like Giddens looked like he wanted to go for the block, right. so he really had no protection back there. So now here come the Tigers, led by this man right here, Shannon Harris, the senior from Wiggins, Mississippi. 6'3", 180-pounder. He was the OVC Player of the Week a couple of weeks ago, actually in week one, after throwing four touchdowns and for 291 yards. Shannon Harris has been very impressive. And already he looks like he wants to throw the football as he goes back into the shotgun formation. Marvin Jones is the sole setback there with him. Harris looking for his tight end. Uh-oh, little alligator arms right there. <laughs> Intended for Steve Farmer, your favorite line. Let's take a look at this <laughs> offense. The starting lineups brought to you by Bud Weiser, Lawrence Smith, and who I can see the big old smile on Nate's face. He loved this guy. But Benedict Abizi, the center, is also a big-time player and also may have a chance to play next year and get paid doing so. Marvin Jones, the veteran, sets you up the power runner, but we'll see a lot from Charles Anthony. Karan Key is the fullback. He leads the team in touchdowns. Second down and ten. Harris back to pass. Ball's away, ball's away. Good protection. And the pass was once again intended for his tight end, Steve Farmer. Just past his outstretched arms, and so it'll be now third down. 34 defense, Don McPherson talked about at the top of the show. Anchoring inside, Charles Woodall, he's been injured, but he's back to make noise. Obi Raz, the former defensive end, that they've moved the linebacker, and he does a whole lot of things. But Tracy White, he is your MEAC Defensive Player of the Year of a year ago. Serge Sejour, just wanted to say that thing. <laughs> right. I love it. And Chad Scott, the former cornerback, is now a safety. Third down now for Harris. Good protection. Oh, and it's that day. And that right there was Damian Walker. Walker, the junior from Sacramento, California. And he comes up with the sack. He now has five and a half on the season. Both teams doing an excellent job of putting pressure on the quarterback and getting an upfield push. The difference is Howard has done it with their interior linemen. Tennessee State was doing it with linebackers. That was a nice rush by Daniel Walker. He's their best all-around player, good pass rusher. Coach, Coach Reggie White says he's, he's just a smart player all around. Joey Hudak punting the football, and Rice back, and boy, there was all kind of folks all over. And he may not have had enough room to catch the ball, as we see laundry all over the field. What type of flag is that, though? Did I mean, it, did he catch the ball? It's the two-yard the two, the two yard halo that he's, he is entitled to. Entitled? You, exactly, entitled to. Yeah, give him his space, give him, space. give him his space. But did he catch the ball? Yes, he did catch the ball. Okay, then it shouldn't be that should pick well, up the flags. Let's flip catch, off. Interference on the kicking team, five-yard penalty, first down. Just a five-yard. Just a five. Look at it. It's the halo right there. He's got to give him two yards. And there's your boy, Joyce, just getting See, a little too don't. close. Joyce just getting ready to cover, baby. He's getting ready for field <laughs> pot. <laughs> Time for a commercial break when we come back. It's still first quarter and we are scoring. Chicken, chicken, heads. Chicken, chicken. And welcome back here to the RCA Dome, George Johnson, along with Dave Newton, Don McPherson. Second down for the Bison, tried a long pass. It was incomplete, so this time they hand it off inside to Jay Colbert, the sophomore from Damascus, Maryland. He picks up a couple yards. You can already see the speed of Tennessee State up front. That time, Coleman had, had the cutback on that particular play, and the, that, that cutback's going to open up as this, as this game develops when the speed of Tennessee State works to the, their disadvantage. And uh, the Jay Colbert, he would be in a lot, especially on third downs. He's the guy that they really want to try to make some things happen with. 
So now he should be in the ball game because it is third down and eight. As Miller goes in motion and Colbert is the lone setback back there with Donald Clark. Clark being forced out of the pocket on the run, throwing the football downfield. And the pass was intended for Philpott, but Giddings was back there defensively for the Tigers. That was a jailbreak, man. I mean, everybody you want to name on Tennessee was coming at him. I mean, they flushed him out of the pocket. He had to, throw, he had to just throw, uh, throw the ball away. And Donald Clark could have made the decision to pull that ball down and run. He had plenty of room. He could have gotten the first down with the ball in his hands. Is that the problem that they're going to have with Donald? Is that maybe he won't leave that pocket too often? He's more committed to staying there and trying to find a receiver? It, what they want him to do is stay there and find a receiver. Sometimes he has happy feet and has a tendency to leave too soon. Patrick Jenkins now is the deep man for Tennessee State, so it looks like they'll alternate with their return man. It's Jenkins back there, but the punt. Uh, Mike Sanders. And it looks like it rolls out of bounds at about the 22-yard line. Sanders coming in. Averaging 31 yards per punt is actually a linebacker punting the football, which shows they don't have a lot of confidence in their kicking game. Well, they've had a lot of troubles with their kicking game, and Sanders is a guy who kicks it on a line drive. So in a situation like this, down on this side of the field, they feel safe letting him try to angle it to a corner. Well, he's had just one punt inside the 20 this season, but last year had 7 of 20 go inside the 20-yard line, so he does have the capabilities. But here's Tennessee State with their second possession of the ball game, first and 10. Harris hands off outside, and oh my! Ooh. And there's a good reason Big why White. this young man, Tracy White, was one of the top defenders in the nation last year. You talk about a guy having a nose for the football. Just watch Tracy White. He's going to come in from the bottom of your screen, number 45, just shooting across the gap, across the formation. A great play by Tracy White. What explosive... Well, what they were trying to do there was a kind of trade play with pulling the backside guard and tackle. And he just he just ran right between with all his speed and made a big play. Illegal formation on the offense. Decline. Second down. So Steve Wilson confident in that defense, not moving them back further in their own territory. They'll take the loss off the play. And this is something Howard has had trouble with in the first part of the season is field position. And so far, they're winning that battle. Three receivers split to the left for Harris. He throws off his back foot, and re receiver makes the catch. Big time play right there. Ball looks like it was caught Patrick. by Patrick Jenkins, the leading receiver on this football team, at just 5'7", 165 pounds. You know, you have to give Howard credit for the pressure that they're putting on Harris, but Harris kept his eyes down the field as he scrambled out of the pocket and made an excellent pass downfield. Just watch Harris's eyes. He keeps his eyes downfield despite the pressure, showing a strong arm there, throwing off his back foot. They're bringing one more uh, player than they can block. 21-yard pickup for Jenkins on that play, and this time they hand it off to Jones, and nothing doing. Good defensive play there by Anthony Hart, the junior from Greensboro. They brought Anthony Hart in the game, especially for this game here, because he's a great pass rush. He comes off the corner. He's a big guy, and they want to stop the run game, but they mainly got him enough for the pass rush. They put uh, Michael... Uh, A.J. on the bench just for this guy, Anthony Hart, for this game here. That's Patrick Jenkins. You got a nice long look at. The junior from Miami, Florida, who made the big-time catch, gave his team good field position. Now at the 40-yard line. Good pressure again by the Bison. This time, though, he gets it off, and that one may have been caught, and they're going to say, no, it was trapped. Once again, we had great pre pressure by Anthony Hart coming. I think they matched up a running back on him, if I'm not mistaken. Hart, of course, 97. Left yep. side of your screen. Hart's going to come in, and you're right, Nate. The running back tried to get, get a piece of him. But once again, Harris with an excellent throw going to his left. Questionable call downfield. Oh, it looked There's like Hart. he may have made that catch. Good hit by White at the end. That'll give him something to think about. <laughs> <laughs> well, this also gives him something to think about. Third down and 10. Ball at the 44-yard line. Over the middle, and the pass is just too far for Jenkins to catch up to. And that'll set up a fourth down situation. But Jenkins should have reached that other arm out there, and Mike would have helped him. What Mike, you five seven. I don't five care seven. what he you is. Put it there for a five seven man. Okay, you would understand being on that. You know, <laughs> what is it? Physically, you, you physically challenge when it comes I'm to not height. Challenged. <laughs> 
So now Hudak will punt the football, averaging 38 yards per punt, his longest this season, 49 yards. What's this kid's name? Hudak, 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 who? Here's Rice. Rice calls for a fair catch at the 30-yard line. So Hudak, who I said averaging 38 yards per punt, and the Bison taking over at the 31-yard line, first and 10. You can see black college football here on BET. Our second game of the season, the Circle City Classic. Howard University with the football taking on Tennessee State. And the Bison running in to a buzzsaw as Bryce Smith, the middle linebacker, leading the way. They say he plugged up the hole. He sure did plug it up there. He plugged it up and got into the backfield. Both teams so far defensively playing in the other team's backfield. That is going to have to improve for both teams because right now they can't get anything going. They can't get any kind of rhythm going. Running backs can't see the hole. Things are just shutting down. Colbert loses six yards on that play, so that makes it now second down and 16. Looks like the jailbreak coming their way again. Colbert finds a hole. Colbert to the 30. Colbert getting out of bounds at about the 39-yard line. Big time play and a good call by the Bison. I, you know, they look for Colbert. I was talking to Fred, the offensive line coach, early. As we see right here, it pulls the backside guard. He comes around. He tries to get a block. But sheer speed right here. He doesn't wait on the block. He just get outside and make things happen. And in this case, they would need a lot of plays from Jay Colbert. Boy, he reminds a lot of folks of little Jimmy Cunningham who played for Howard University a couple of years ago, wore the same number, number 21. Very exciting player who went on and played up in Canada. Third down now and one yard to go for first. Clark now with I-4 formation behind. This time they hand it off to the deep back for the Bison. And that's Michael Harris. And right. Harris looks like he may have picked up the first down. Right behind Marquis. Marquis Ogden and Glenn Vest. They just hit it right up the right up the gut. They just want to play some hard-nosed football. Try to take some of the sting out of this uh, Tennessee State defense coach. Like they said, they rank nationally. Uh, they're, they're a tough team. And, hey, they're going to be hard to beat. Talk about Vincent. 6'3", 295-pound junior, number 63 in Ogden. 6'6", 325. It's a nice pass. Hands in, hands in, both. Clark. Clark, that ball looks like it may have gotten away from me a little bit. The pass was intended for Kevin Simmons. It looked like he may have beaten his, receiver, his defender on that play. Yeah, Clark had to put just a little bit more air under the football. You know, talking to Steve Wilson, he said Clark throws the deep ball well. That time, too much on the line. Didn't give Simmons enough time to get underneath it. Because if you're even, you leave. That's what they say. <laughs> Don't There's the Steve Wilson talking to him yesterday about how he was going to attack this Tennessee State defense. He says everything's going to be quick hitting. No shotgun. They're going to keep guys close to the line of scrimmage. We saw a quick fade pass. A lot of the run plays are quick hitting. Get a good look at Donald Clark, the junior. Average 158 yards passing. This time, nothing doing. There's defense all over it. That was Walter Reese coming in, number 40, to make things happen in this And Carnell Myers, it was just a host of players <laughs> coming in. They're coming in from the middle. They're coming from the outside. Quarterback didn't even get a chance to set up. I mean, they pull up a lineman out and try to give him some extra protection. They pull number 63 out, Glenn Vincent. Hey, he's can't eat. Hey, by the time he turned around, he was, mad, he was murdered. Fourth sack on the season for Walter Reese, which leads this club. He's just sacked by committee with both Tennessee State. They're not going to have one guy with 15, 20 sacks. They're going to use like three or four guys with five or six sacks. Uh -huh. They're going to hit you from every angle. Hands in, hands Third down in. and long for Clark. Clark's pass complete for Javante Philpott, but he is going to be short of the first down by about five yards. Good coverage there by Dion Giddings. That's a young guy. They're expecting a lot from him. Uh, just a solid ball player. I would assume what you do in that situation, you lay off, you let those guys get the catch in front of you, you just don't get the first down. Absolutely, as a defensive back, you have to know where the first down walker is, and you know, just like you said, you let a guy break in front of you, and just keep him contained. So Jenkins now, back to receive the punt, standing inside his own 15, a good punt. He's going to feel it, he's going to let that one go. Jenkins trying to make something happen, and he's tackling about the 13-yard line. But he fielded it at the 4-yard line, and one would assume he may have wanted to let that one bounce. 
So here we are in the first quarter, 7.23 left, and we are still scoreless between the Tigers and the Bison. Shannon Harris underneath center as Tennessee State takes over first and 10 inside their own 15. And this time they will to the true freshman, Charles Anthony, the freshman from Orlando. Hey, Homeboy, a big boy. That Orlando here. Jones, he gonna make that. <laughs> but you know right there, man, they want a uh, big Bened Benedict of BC, the big center. They, they, they hoping that he can move Charles Woodall. But Charles Woodall's been out the last few games, and he just coming back and talking to their coach. They say he's a man child. He plugs things up in the middle and gives the, the Tracy White and Mike Sanders a chance to run and make plays. And Woodall making a play there. No game for the young kid, Anthony, who's the leading rusher on this team. Second down in 10. Harris Balls away, checks, balls away. throws it to the outside. Good defensive play for the Bison right there by Serge Sejour, number five, who comes up and makes the pop on Jenkins right after he makes the catch. And talking to Gene Atkins, he's a great cover guy right here. He comes with a short pass underneath route, and he comes right up. He just waits to come right up. He just read the play. As uh, those skills guys would say, hey, he read the route. He was just in, in what they call squad coverage, just right. sitting on that route. Sejour, the former quarterback, converted to a corner. Doc, did you made that move? Never. <laughs> Here's Harris, over the middle, completes his pass. He's going to be close to a first down as Duraje makes the play. That's Ande, who came into the ball game with just one reception on the season for nine yards, making two now in the year. As he caught this one for close to ten. There's Shannon, the transfer from Mississippi Gulf Community College. Last year appeared in just five games, completed 50% of his passes back then for 650 yards. I don't think they imagined him to be as good as he's been so far this season for this club undefeated. No, not at all. Steve Wilson said looking at him on film the last couple of weeks, he went from playing just kind of mediocre to really coming out and playing excellent last week. So he's really hoping that he shows that, that style and that form that he showed in the first half of the season. I mean, that is about as close as it can get without being a first down. They are deep in their own territory. Do you risk the possibility of not getting to go for it. Way, way too early in the ball game to go for it, I think. I think you have, you have to kick the ball down the field right now. You're playing the field position game. This whole first half, first quarter, has been played on the Tennessee State side of the field. Don't take a chance. But, you know, Jimmy Johnson always told me, you got the feel of your team and the emotion drives on your shoulders, why not take a chance early? Because if your defense is playing well, you don't have to worry about it. Well, right now, it looks like he's thinking. Look at <laughs> Coach is sitting there saying, you know, uh, I don't know. James Reese is, you know, second-year coach. Why coaches always run to their assistants on the series like this? <laughs> because their assistants aren't the first ones to get fired. And so they, they, they can make a decision more freely. And his assistant said, listen, I'm not making as much as you send the fun out there on the field. I hear that. So Hudak will come right back out and punt the football. Hudak also a true freshman hunting and place kicking for this team. He's from Miami, Florida. They're doing a pretty good job for people down there in the Sunshine State. Hey, you know where the ball players come from. It's not New York. Uh, it's not Washington, D.C. Here's Rice, and Rice makes the catch and then falls on his bottom. And the ball will be marked at about the 33-yard line. So Hudak put the punt. Sets up the Bison first and ten. Circle City Classic featuring the Howard Bison and the Tennessee State Tigers. George Johnson along with Don McPherson. Oh, Big Nate wild. Newton and gentlemen. You know, Nate, I'm going to have to lean on you a little bit. I mean, we're talking <laughs> up here. I mean, the O-line, where's the O-line at? Where's the O-line play? It just has to settle down. I mean, both uh, uh, defensive teams are bringing pressure. They just got to settle down, go to the sideline with their respective coaches, and just draw up a little better game plan. Just tweak <laughs> the game plan. Just, just a touch. And things will slow down. Coming into the ball game, both teams averaging 24 points per contest. And yet the Rangers are nothing alike as the Tigers 
are three and zero, oh, and that pass is somehow completed. And boy, you've got to credit Clark with the play of getting it off, and then the catch by Colbert, big time. Definitely, what they're doing is crowding the line. They're bringing everybody up. They they bring in one more man that they can block, and that's the quarterback man. Do you agree, Doug? And well, that was the nickel man, Ramen, who came in the game just for that play and blitzed up the middle and got right in Clark's face, and that was a very dangerous, ill-advised pass by Clark. As you get a good look at Jay Colbert, the sophomore, who has come in. He's the third leading receiver on this club coming in, so he not only has shown the ability to run the football, but to also catch it. Picked up three yards on that play, making second down and seven. Good block right there by the running back, Rice. And that gave Clark a little time, but he could not find Phil Clark. Yeah, and what happened that time is that Reese got up the field and didn't allow Clark to get his shoulders square downfield and make an accurate throw. When his shoulders are going towards the sideline, the ball's going to sail like it did out of bounds. Reese is the type of guy. He's just a, a good, hard-nosed football player. They put him in position to make plays, and he's always trying. Look at him. He's coming off the corner. He defeats two blockers there and still get a hit on the quarterback. The quarterback looking at him like, come on, man, I'm tired of you. It's just <laughs> Maurice, who was a preseason All-Ohio Valley Conference selection this year. Last year, he was the second leading tackler on the club, and he was a first-teamer. Did not play football in 99 because of injury. Third down now in seven. Two receivers split to the left of Clark, one to the right. That's Kevin Simmons to the right. Clark, quick drop. Clark's pass is in and out of the hands of his intended receiver. Pass was intended for number 83, Richard McIntyre, and he couldn't hold on to it. You know, if Howard's going to get anything going offensively, those are the plays they're going to have to make. The quick-hitting receivers, the quick-hitting plays. That time, he had a chance for the first down, and McIntyre has to hold on to the football. That's what they need to do. Get rid of the ball very quickly so it takes the rush out of the ball game. They have to make those plays. McIntyre, who's 6'4", and Giddens just 5'10", defending. There was a disadvantage there. Coming out Here's your booming kick. Back deep for the Tigers is Carlos Wright. He just lets it bounce in again. The Bison continue to maintain field position, as you talked about, Don. Keeping them pinned deep in their own territory. And surprisingly enough, they've done a decent job in their kicking game. First quarter starts to wind down. Coming up to the four-minute mark. The Howard Bison taking on these guys right here, the Tigers of Tennessee State, who came in undefeated at 3-0. and The Bison looking for a victory, needing a victory. You know, Tennessee State did not play very well against Southeast Missouri, a team that they overmatched. And sometimes teams have a tendency to let down when they're playing what they would consider to be a lesser opponent. Inside handoff this time for the Tigers. They gain substantial yards on it as Marvin Jones picks up about 11 yards on the play. That was nice block, a big hole there. He just waited, slot right there, and, and picked his hole. It's a draw play, kind of a draw play. He just waited. They open up things on the right side. He picked the hole and makes a nice cutback and goes straight downhill. DBs hate to see guys that size coming at you. Look like. Number 75 of BC, good job blocking. And Alan Brown may have been in there, the freshman, also opening up that hole. First and 10 for the Tigers, and they give it back to Jones, and now we may start seeing something. When you want to settle your offensive line down, that's what you do. You start just hitting it up the middle, getting everybody adjusted, making the defense uh, adjust to you and play your type of ball. You know, when you come out passing and want to wing it, you know, people are going to bless you from every angle, but now they're trying to settle down and make things happen. And in particular, those slow developing plays up the middle allows that outside rush that Howard's been getting and taking that outside rush out of the play. Jones picks up six yards on the play, and they give it again to Jones. And this time, defensively, the Bison make the stop. Coming up to make the tackle was Keith Weber, the senior from Gaffney, South Carolina. Weber's a guy who's really had to step up his game because of the injury to Vontre Long out for the year. And Weber makes a nice aggressive tackle at the line of scrimmage. You don't often see those safeties coming up right in the line of scrimmage. Well, this is a guy right now in Gaffney who makes a lot of tackles behind the line of scrimmage. Coming in, eight of his 24 tackles had been for loss. Third down now for the Tigers. Pass over the middle and unable to pull in the pass is number one, Carlos Wright. Once again, Carnell Myers was in his face. 
Oh, is I'm, I'm thinking I'm wrong. Sorry. Anytime you see the quarterback Harris on his butt like that after a pass, you know the defense is, is doing a good job of keeping the pressure on. Once, a, once again, it was Anthony Hart who got a hit on Harris in the back. Right. That's Daniel Walker. So who that? Back to punt. Yeah. And the Rice. A lot. Looks like he's going to field it. Calls for a fair catch at the 32-yard line. So 240 left here in our first quarter. Following that 37-yard punt, the Bison take over first and 10 at 32. of three first downs in this ball game. A big reason why is the defensive play. The Bison putting pressure on quarterback Shannon Harris, just letting him know that they're around as they continue the pressure of the quarterback and then make big plays like that on the running game. As for the Tigers, who have allowed an average of just nine points a game coming in, they also making things very hard for Donald Clark and crew as you take a look now at average yards per play. Boy, yeah, that, that average is going to go down. Unfortunately, nothing went on on the offensive side. <laughs> so here we are, first and ten for the Bison, looking to change things offensively. Defensive hands, line hands, moves hands. a little bit. Clark throws up the middle, pass is complete to Javante Philpott, and Philpott takes it out to about the 42, close to a first down, but we have a flag thrown back at the 27-yard line. And everyone kind of pulled up as Scantling went off sides, but then Donald Clark kept his eyes down the field, Actually, it's going to be a hold, and it's going to go against Howard. Wow. And Clark had gotten that defensive line to jump a little right. bit. Holding on the offense. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Still first down. I was very surprised they didn't call the offsides on Scantling. He was definitely across the line of scrimmage at the snap of the ball. Meanwhile, as you take a look at big number Dan, uh, 88, Danny Roberson, the senior from Detroit, Michigan. 6'6", six, six, by the way, big boy. 6'6". Six, six, six. Six. <laughs> <laughs> but they still, we thought we were going to see Javante Philpott get loose, and they still take away his first catch of the ball game. Yes, he's covering him right now. First and 20. And again, just moving Roberson right on cue. Says, yeah, I'm 6'6", six, six, all right. Yeah, he's a little bit too big for that number 88. They need to give him a, a number with a, a nine in front of him. <laughs> but, you know, that's college Defense. football. That's college football. All size. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. I'm surprised he's not wearing, like, number 22, huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> i tell you what, that's though. What they, I, they, I know you try to go to the training camp every year and try to get one of them, them low numbers, one of them 18, 19. I, I didn't need it, man. I was a standout. I didn't need that. <laughs> <laughs> so first down, first down and 15 as we've had two penalties. First the holding by the Bison, offside by the Tigers. That made it first and 15. And how about Roberson getting inside that time and disrupting everything Howard wanted to do offensively on that play? He, he just, he just lined him over the center. He's, you know, his team pinches. And they just, they pinch it inside and hit the gaps. And they... Right here you see everybody slant. Big Roberson reaches over everybody and snatches 21, which is J. Cobra, out of the air. By the way, he beats Marcus Ogden on that play, too, number yeah. 71. Oh, yes. <laughs> Second down now. Sorry about that, Big Nate. Second down. Let's make it 18 for the Bison, who haven't done a good job of throwing the football downfield. They said they would. Clark gets a little time this time and throws in the double coverage. Pass was intended for Philpott, but he was double covered there. Well, that time Clark had his man Simmons at the first, excuse me, at the, the beginning of the first down marker, about 10 yards down the field, and he held on to it too long, trying to go further down the field, trying to get the first down. Remember, it's only second down. You only have to get half of it. I saw Philpott. And there, there's Simmons to the left of the screen, and Philpott goes deep. You see he's got Stevens behind him and Giddens in front of him. He was double covered on that play, which was what they're going to try to do. They're going to favor Philpott in the secondary. Here's Clark now on third down and long. And the offensive line moved, and they're going to move him back even further. And, you know, that, that's come from the pressure of Tennessee State defense. I mean, you're trying to make them jump. At, when I was offensive lineman, the quarterback said, hey, man, this is going to be a hard two. I was hard nervous. Snap. False start on the offense. Still third down. I, I would be nervous. 
Especially if I had Reggie White, somebody like a Warren Sapp lined up on my head. I'm like, yo, that's not going hard to you. Let's just, let's just go on a soft three. <laughs> but, let me, <laughs> but let me tell you why Donald Clark is doing that. Because Tennessee State is trying to bring the linebackers in the gap, and they're trying to time it up. He's trying to change up that snap count so the defense don't, doesn't get a rhythm on the snap count. Third down, make it 25. They hand it off inside to Colbert. And Colbert picks up a couple of yards before being dragged down by Scantling. There's Desmond right there, the junior from Knoxville. And there really isn't much in the playbook for third and 25. In the punt? Yes, it is. Number 49, Mike Sanders. draw. <laughs> Is it designed to get that first? Yeah, no, it's designed to just get you out of the game. <laughs> so now here are the Tigers with an opportunity to get themselves good field position for the first time all game as Carlos Wright is standing back at his 40-yard line. He'll let it bounce once, and he'll feel it. Trying to get to the outside. Spins, drops the football! And the Bison are saying they've got it. And they do. Football was fumbled by Carlos Wright and the Bison recovered. Donovan Burton with the honors. As you see right, he picks up the ball. He's not very decisive. You need to catch it and get upfield. But once he starts, he's not holding it very tight and gets away from it. Traylon so Andrews knocks it loose. Sorry, Nick. So far, this game has been a little listless. The players, that both teams come out a little bit flat. Offensive line not doing a lot of blocking. This is the type of play that sparks a team. Now, hopefully, the Howard offense is coming on the field thinking, we've got a break, we've got a chance, we've got the ball midfield. They have to capitalize. So here we are, first and 10 for the Bison. Ball is marked at the 48-yard line. Looking to get inside Tiger territory. Clark, good protection. Clark. Kevin Simmons with the one-handed grab. That was a nice catch by Kevin Simmons. And he had time because I think they left the backs in there to block. As you can see, the backs are standing there giving them max protection, giving them all the help they need. He's standing back. He lets the ball back real nice. He puts a little air up under it. Well, a little bit too much, and he had to make a great wind to catch. This is what they always tell you for the receiver school. Keep your eye on the ball the entire time. That time Simmons was looking back the entire time. If he kept his hit, eyes downfield and running downfield, he might have been able to run underneath it. And that's that 6 5 10 matchup that I talked about a couple of plays ago. Simmons with the ability to go up and get it with uh, Giddens watching him. Giddens just 5'10", and Simmons again, 6'4", 185 pounds. And it was a stop and go route. And Simmons was showing not only his side, but strength because Giddens kind of sat on the route and he ran through him. So we've come to the end of the first quarter. Still scoreless. The Bison, though, knocking on the door. We'll have more right after this. And welcome back to Indianapolis, Indiana. Circle City Classic coming your way from the RCA Dome. Black College Football here on BET. The Howard Bison came into this football game with just one win on the season. Taking on the number five team in all of black college football, Tennessee State. But we are scoreless after one quarter of play. We expected Tennessee State's defense to play well. They hadn't allowed a, a right. touchdown all year long in the first quarter. But the Bison's defense has also picked it up. And yet we still have three very long quarters <laughs> to play. Yo, alma mater, how long will they hold on? Let's see. Let's see if they can get this right. football anywhere near some scoring territory. Clark, first and ten. Ball at the 31. He's throwing again. And the floodgates opened up. And Javante Philpott, he had a chance on that one. I think he was looking a little bit over at the defensive back, Steve. Well, well, Tennessee State is crowding the line of scrimmage and forcing Clark to throw the ball early. That time, Clark should have thrown the ball a lot earlier. Philpott's just going to go on the quick slant to the outside. Clark held on to the ball too long. He wanted it earlier. He wanted it sooner. That time you start looking at Stevens, you saw no, number oh, yeah. six coming. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? He wanted to run with it, too. He knew he had him a touchdown. So with that missed ball, it makes it second down and ten for the Bison. Three receivers split to the right Go of ahead, Clark. Going back, the long going set up. back is Colbert. Simmons in motion, I'm fresh off that one-handed grab. This one taken from behind the line of scrimmage, looking for some room, and picks up 
Nice yards on that play. Finally brought down by Bryce Smith, the linebacker, but not until he picks up about eight yards. And we've been making so much noise about that Philpott Joyce uh, matchup. This time, Philpott makes a great block. Top of your screen, Philpott and Joyce on the corner. You'll have Simmons go in motion. Now, this is a backwards pass, so this would be a, considered a lateral. And there's the blocking right now by Philpott on Joyce. That's great offensive line play there. It's one of the few times Tennessee didn't blitz, and they didn't get there. And you can see number 45, Bryce, closing in on Simmons, who, as I said, picks up eight yards on the play. And so the Bison faced with a third down and two. And when we come back, we'll see what they do. Going at it. Circle City Classic. On this Southwest Airlines presentation of Black College Football here on PET. Third down and two now for the Bison, who haven't had a lot of success running the football. Hands here, hands here, hands here. Clark, away, quickly, away. stop, look in the end zone, and unable to find his wide receiver. Pass was intended for Sean Miller. Incomplete makes it fourth down. And, and don't expect the kicking team to come on the field for Steve Wilson. They haven't been had a lot of success kicking field goals. If he gets rid of this ball just a little bit sooner, it allows the receiver to get his head around and locate the ball. That ball was just a little bit overthrown. But this is four down territory for Howard. They've if only we block it, it's a free ball. Gentlemen, block it, it's a nine free ball. field goals in the last two seasons. That's why they're going for it on fourth and three. And Jason Walker this year has only converted on one of three. That one for 27 yards. If they were to kick this one, this one would be a 36 yard. So now they're going to go on fourth down and two. Give it inside to the running no, back. No. And nothing doing. A host of Tigers there defensively to make the play on Michael Harris. As you know, Tennessee is not going to give it up. And they haven't given up anything but six quarters in, six points in the fourth quarter. When you get inside like this right here, all you think about is our backs to the wall and everything shorten up. Do you think, guys, that maybe that should have been their third down play? Or not necessary? Well, I, I think they had a shot on third down. They had a touchdown, and, and Clark just overthrew the ball. Uh, it's easy to second guess, but I yeah. think you take a shot. When, when the team is thinking third down, they're going to run it. You throw the ball knowing they're going for it on fourth down. Tennessee State probably thinks they're going to kick it on fourth down. It is very hard to run against this defense. Very hard. Who's given up 122 yards total per game. Whoa. And another fumble for the Tigers. But this time, Marvin Jones is able to fall on it. They lost the football on the punt return, almost lost it here. We've been calling Anthony Hart's name all day long on the pass game. That time, he got in Harris's face so fast, Harris wasn't prepared to make the pitch, and that's why it was behind him. But, but in talking to Coach Reese earlier, right here, as you see, he pitches it quick. This is like a running back wasn't even prepared to get it. But talking to Coach Reese earlier this week, he was saying that his team had the best two practices of, 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 of the whole season. Uh, it doesn't look like right here, like they're out of scene. Second down in 19. In motion, C.J. Johnson. Here, here, here. Away, throw, and Harris's pass dangerous there. Looked like it was behind the receiver, setting up a third and long. And they are really getting a nice upfield push. As you can see, Coach Reese right there, he's, he's kind of disturbed. This has been a very high potent offense. As you said, as you said, they, they really haven't shown any kind of rhythm, any kind of consistency. As you said earlier, sometimes a team play down a level, but you gotta understand Howard is gonna play up a level too. So we this game is equaling out so far. 417 yards a game is what Tennessee State is averaging. That's why Dom McPherson tells you they do have the ability to be a quick Balls away, balls potent. away! This time they're throwing downfield, and the pass is caught, and they're gonna say it's incomplete. Pass was caught by Ron Jackson. And a nice catch by Jackson, but he's out of bounds. If, oh. if it were Canadian Football League, it's first it's first, first down. It's wide, a little Absolutely. wider field. Okay. <laughs> but it's not. So he gotta know that he's gotta get boy, you know, he's gotta know that he's gotta get uh, closer to the numbers or to the hash or something to get that quarterback uh, time, you know, to get the ball in the air to give him some adjustments. So now who that? Punting from his own end zone. Here's Rice, 
going to call for a fair catch. And he drops the football! May have gotten back on top of it, but boy, what a dangerous situation it, for it, the Bison. And there's your man Joyce again with the halo. Violating the halo. Not giving him room, huh? I see flags all over. You know, that, that rule there, that, that's not a football rule. <laughs> that's not a football rule. That's where some commissioners and you know, you guys, you know, you guys some play. teams of colleges got together and said, let's, let's interject the rule that, you know, we can have, you know. Hutch, Hutch. Kitch, catch, interference. Yeah. On the kicker team, five yard penalty, first down. Good. You guys that play play in the box don't realize how much speed and what's going on down in the field. You have to give that guy, when he's looking up in the air, some time to catch the football. Yeah, okay, give, give him room, give him room. 12.54 left here in the first half, we're right back. <laughs> Welcome back, Circle City Classic. Got big Nate Newton up in the house, Don yes. McPherson in the crib. <laughs> I'm George Johnson. Yeah, yeah, George Johnson. <laughs> We are scoreless. Oh, man, no. Tigers, Bison, and the Bison with the football. They had the football deep in Tennessee State's territory, went for it on fourth down. And again, movement on the defensive front. Walter Reese, number 40, looked like he was a little impatient on that play. <laughs> Once again, the hard count that time. Donald Clark pulled himself offside. <laughs> <laughs> but you know the funny thing about it, last week in Southeast Missouri, Tennessee Trevor Snapper, had... We have a snap infraction on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Tennessee had 20 penalties last week. And, and I told Coach, I was talking to him this week, uh, Coach Reese, eventually that's going to come up, uh, jump up and grab you. I hope not this week here. They jumped up and grabbed them last week. Those those penalties you talked right. about, four of them called touchdowns back, if right. I'm not mistaken. They had a 90-yard kickoff return call back for penalty, a five-yard run, and an 88-yard reception all called back because of penalties. Yeah, and they sent that, that tape to the conference commissioner because they didn't think that all of them were legitimate. Well, let's say half of them. It's still a lot. First and 15. Good defensive play by the tight Tigers. That's your main bell. Beal, is I'm pronouncing it right? Beal, absolutely. Oh, God made a nice play. Beal with his third sack of the season. Play fake doesn't get Beal at all. He keeps his eyes upfield, attacks the outside shoulder of that quarterback. Nice job by Beal. This is what Howard can't afford. This is not what they want to do. They don't want those long, those long developing plays. They want quick hitters. As long as they keep running those long developing plays, it's going to give Tennessee State's defensive speed to come back into play. You know, the amazing thing is everything that's happened good for Howard, they are, they, they're not turning anything positive. They just, they just hurt themselves. Immediately. Speaking of hurting themselves, is Desmond Scantling okay? Probably no, knock just the wind out of Probably knock the wind out of the cell. Yeah, as soon as they, if they get to run a guy off the field and then he get on his back and start stretching out, he'll be back in a minute. Second down and 23 for the Bison. Squandering perfect opportunities. Delayed handoff goes to Rice. Rice has some running room. And Rice had the ball knocked out of his hands, but the Bison may have been able to recover that when Joyce, one of the players there to make the pop, as well as Marquis Stevens. So they played against the speed of Tennessee, Then they, they know they're getting upfield, they pressure, so let's get a draw and tell the offensive line right here, just tell the offensive line, take the guy where you want to go, just stay on it, let the back pick his way, he jumps outside. This is another one of those guys, Terry, that they want in there to make a big play to get outside. A lot he of hit by a little Joyce. Bit there. Oh, he did a little bit, he fumbled a lot. Joyce, Joyce came over there and made the pop on. Joyce been wanting to make a hit all <laughs> Day. That's like a little. That's like being a little pregnant. You right. either, you know, you either fumble or you don't. Well, you know what? He fumbled. <laughs> Third down and 15 for the Bison. Now try to get to the outside with Cole. Nice move to dance to the outside. Finally, he's brought down by Giddens. Don, I know the kicking game, uh, the field goal situation haven't been on the party last few years. But if you get in close, the defense continue to stop you. Right here, it's good movement by the left side of the line. They stay on their man. Cobra makes a nice move inside and jumps outside and punishes the DB. Looks like Phil Pot missed a block out there. If he had been able to make a little block on a defensive back, he may have had more room to pick up more yards. He's probably still about, thinking about that catch he dropped. <laughs> that catch that should have you know, been made that he dropped. So now it's fourth and ten. And because of the lack of kicking game, they're going to go for it. Steve Wilson's club. 
Tiger's territory. Here comes the blitz. Clark downfield. Clark. And the pass, I would assume, was intended for Simmons. But no one near it looks like Safeula. And that's Ahmed Safeula with a chance to make the interception there, unable to come down with it. So the Bison will turn the football over, and Tennessee State has it. First and 10 when we get back. Good view of the RCA Dome here in Indianapolis, where Tennessee State, Howard going at it. On first and 10, Marvin Jones gets it to the outside, dragged out of bounds by White and Walker, and yet flags come flying in. To wait and see who this is charged to. Right now, the, the bugs and the kinks should be out of the offense, and uh, they should be up talking to their respective coaches and got things settled down. But it seemed like Howard is study putting the pressure Hold on the defense. On the offense, 10 yard penalty, spot foul, still first down. Seven. So now it's going to be first and 20 for the Tigers who come in 3 0, opened up the season with a victory over Alabama AM. Then knocked off Florida AM. Florida who? Florida AM. Before last week's win over Southeast Missouri, 20 to 14. Two years ago, they were 11 and 0 in the regular season. Before losing to North Carolina AT in the first round of the Division I AA playoffs. On first and 10, or first and 20, they go to the outside pass intended for Jackson. Coverage there by Sejour and yet another flag. Well, Sejour was all over Jackson's back. It's definitely going to be a holding call against Sejour. It was a nice route. Deep, it's like a deep out. It's like a curl and then out by Jackson. And he's going to get a nice push up the field on Sejour. Then watch Sejour grab the jersey. There's the hold, baby. Call it every time. It, 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 to me, you know, it's got to be some kind of contact there, some type, you know what I'm saying, to be able to touch it. But I mean, that was kind of picky. But he, you know? but he, but he held him from getting to the outside, big man. Okay, okay well, if, you, if you believe that, <laughs> if you believe that. Catch the ball is what I say. You, you're a skill position player. <laughs> well, with that, you know, they had a first and 20, had him pinned back, but they get the automatic first down, right. I would assume, with the pass interference. And they, and they only get 10 yards in the run back first down. But the amazing thing is Howard has had the breaks early in the game to go their way. I, I imagine where if Tennessee gets the breaks, where they, where they capitalize off of their breaks. Marvin Jones is still your senior oh, no. setback. In motion, Anthony Brown, the backup tight end, as they try to get to the outside. Coming up to make the play is Jeremy Holt, number 26. Good defensive play for the Bison. Yeah, both secondaries are, are doing an outstanding job of making tackles in the backfield. That time, Holt reading the play coming his way. Slow developing play. Holt was able to get up the field and get in the backfield. But you know what? Rico Walkham put some pressure there to make it happen, to string it on out for them to make that play. So that was a great play by him. So Jones loses two yards on the play. Second down and 12. Harris dumps it off. And I don't know, that didn't look, I mean, it looked like it was sort of an unorthodox pass. It looked like it kind of got away from him. But he did have a receiver there in Carlos Wright. Right now, it, it, I don't know. It's like both teams are out of sync. The offense can't get anything going. I mean, you can credit that to both defenses. But like I say, once again, these coaches got to settle their players down and try to get some type of rhythm in their offenses. Right now, Tennessee State going without a huddle. It's not a hurry-up offense. It's a no-huddle offense. And maybe this is just a momentum changer for them to get their mindset back in that mode. Hands in, hands in. Harris, back to pass. Good pressure by the Bison. This time, he'll hold on to it. <laughs> Boy, he saw Woodhall coming his way. Yes, he did. You know what? I think I'm going to fall down on this one. The, the first guy he saw was Damian Walker, who right. just made a tremendous move on the tackle. Got upfield, got in his face. The Bison and the Tigers, it has not been a clean ball game. You've got the fumble there by Carlos Wright on the punt. You've got the big time hit and then the fumble right there by Shannon Harris, the quarterback. Then Tariq Rice fumbles the football but gets it back. Just been 
nothing clean about this football game, and so now it's fourth down and five. Both teams should be at mid-season season form. They should be clicking on all cylinders. Joey Hudak. Remember, this is one of those games that's at a neutral site. Now, I don't balls know away, if I'm trying away. to find an excuse for why they played this way. As this punt by Hudak drops it about the 34-yard line. will be downed at the 30-yard line. 31-yard punt. It'll be first and 10 Howard when we get back. The 30-yard line, as we remain scoreless in this one. Donald Clark is your quarterback, has been so all along here for the Bison. And Javante Philpott was in the area, but that pass again seemed to get away from him. Well, that time, that time Philpott was reading a squat coverage, and he pulled up on the route. He should have released up the field. That's what Clark was reading. That's why Clark threw the ball down the field. So who is wrong, Philpott or Clark? I mean... Is the quarterback right in this instance? Uh, Phil, Pop, Phil Pop was wrong on that because he read a squat coverage. He should right. release on a squat coverage up the field. Instead, he curled up right. and clocked the ball down. But did it look like it got away from him again, the pass? It did. Because it may not have been completed even if he ran up field. It looks like it was just a little too high. The late handoff this time goes to Colbert. And oh my, how you doing, says Jermaine Peel. And Tennessee played that perfect. They didn't blitz then. They st they sit, they sat back and saw what was happening. They just played a four-man front there. They stayed in their lanes and let the linebackers camp come up and feel. Boom. Nice hit. Bill. Jermaine, the junior from Atlanta, Georgia has the most unassisted tackles on this football team, and he is second on the squad in tackles coming into the ball game. Versatile player. They say Bill can play any linebacker spot on this field. Third down now and 10. Clark is now in the shotgun formation. He's going to fake it. Robertson's going to say, you should have got rid of it a long time ago. You should have got rid of it. Excellent coverage down the field. Once again, they had double coverage on Philpott. Beal dropped back into the coverage and was underneath Philpott. And that time, Donald Clark was looking for one guy, and that's why the sack happened. Time now for our Coca-Cola trivia question. What 2001 common opponent of Howard and Tennessee State this year did Nate Newton play for in college? Don't start, Nate. You're hey. supposed to know. I, I know you know. I know, that. I know. Fourth down situation for the Bison. Bad punt. And they came after Sanders, and Sanders felt rushed. And he didn't get rid of it. But we do have a flag on the play at the 23-yard line. As you get a good look at Mike Sanders, the sophomore from Greensboro, South Carolina, who is also a linebacker, playing punter, and it looked like it. Circle City Classic still scoreless with eight minutes left here in our first half. And just a reminder of our Coca-Cola trivia question. What 2001 common opponent of Howard and Tennessee State did Nate Newton play for in college? Nate, give me the answer. Florida and m fam, you rattlers. Thank you. <laughs> Today's trivia question brought to you by Coca-Cola. Yeah. As we have Big Nate Newton, Don McPherson in the house here at the RCA yeah. Dome. I'm George Johnson. And when you think about so far, I mean, has it surprised you? No score in this ball game. We would have thought that at least the Tigers could have put a couple of points on the board by now. Well, that's what we expected from Tennessee State. And as Nate's been saying the whole game, they haven't gotten their rhythm. And Howard has been able to take advantage of it. But here you see a Howard mistake in the special teams. He's going to give Duran Key a big hole to the sideline. And Key finds some running room, gets inside the 15-yard line, down to about the 12. Duran Key is a big is a big kid, and he was coming 90 going north. <laughs> well, he's a guy that, that is known really for his blocking because he is so big. You look at the it, size it of his right guy. here. Nice block by Lauren Smith, turning his guy. Karan bats another guy down, turns on the local or the Jets. What the Jets he had. <laughs> it goes for it. <laughs> Karan Key, the senior from Nashville, Tennessee, with a 24-yard pickup. And we talked about how Tennessee State quick strike ability. And here they are now. But here comes White. Tracy White. Well, a big time play, the linebacker. Guys like that are <laughs> invaluable. I mean. Right, right up the middle. Comes free. No one there to block him. Great defensive call. Great defensive call. Put players in 
a player of his caliber, put him in place, and he'll make plays right there. And that time you had the left tackle looking outside. What you have to do, especially what you get here in the red zone, is protect inside first. And Anthony Hart, number 97, almost had a chance at an interception on that play. Second down now. Harris over the middle. Touchdown. Carlos right. But we do have a flag on the play at the goal line. But one would assume that'd be defensive interference on a play with the flag thrown around there. Yep, so Drew was all over right that time. And the official was right there to make the call, but it's all for naught because this it will be a touchdown for Tennessee State. In the slot, bottom of your screen is right. He's going to make, excuse me, coming in from the bottom of your screen is right. Number one, it's just a slant route. And Tajor comes up just a little bit too aggressive on the play. But Wright does a nice job of keeping his body square to Sajor. That secures the catch. Carlos Wright with his third touchdown reception of the season. The sophomore from Middleburg, Florida. Again, another Floridian getting it done for the Tigers. The kick is up and it is good. And that's another, that's another deal where they have taken advantage of a break. Alba did not take advantage of that earlier break. So, touchdown pass by Harris. It's now 4-13 from the field. And it's 7-0. And Carlos Wright came into the ball game averaging 12 yards of reception. Touchdown catch right here, good four, 12 yards. And it gives Tennessee State the early 7 0 lead. He's keeping the average up. But you know, in defense to the defensive back, he was in position, but the receiver was just in a little better position. Well, they say first contact wins out there, and that right. time, Wright got the ball without being contested by Sajor. It was once he got down the field that Sajor decided to make contact, then it was too late. Right. And keep in mind that all this happened when Mike Sanders, the punter for the Bison, had a 14-yard punt, right. and that really hurt and gave Tennessee State the kind of field position they've been looking for all ball game. Here come the Bison now, trying to find some room. And that may spell disaster for the Bison right there. As the last thing they need to do is to start to get down on themselves. They've been in this football game. They've hung around, and you can't let that touchdown get you down. You know, one thing that you have to do on special teams is get your, get your body north and south and go right away. Don't change direction I because agree. the pursuit will catch up to you. It's not like you change direction. Too many guys coming back the other way. And when you get a team inside their 20 on the kickoff, the percentages go way up that you'll get out and it'll go against you that you'll get out inside the 10 and score. Remember, most of the first half so far has been played on the Howard side of the field, excuse me, on the Tennessee State side of the field. Now we're playing on the Howard side. And that's what that bad punt will do for you. So here you go, first and 10 for the Bison, inside their own 15. They're going to give it to Colbert. Going to try to follow some blocking to the outside, still on his feet. A couple of guys standing around watching as he had to make his way out to the 20 almost by himself when he made the cutback. I but thanks what, to Walters coming on that nice pursuit angle and not giving up and saving a touchdown. But let me tell you what Colbert does so well. You see some nice blocking there by Ogden. Oh, yes. Watch him accelerate after he changed direction. Right there. Accelerate Go. and split the defense like that. That's the kind of thing that Barry Sanders did so well that drove guys crazy because he was able to accelerate after the cut. Victor Walter is the tight end number 89 who I was talking about. Who you want to put a helmet Almost on somebody. Caught him, Mr. Smith. Here we go. Second him. down though. Make it three after a seven yard pickup. Good defensive play that time though. And that was Desmond Scantley. Coming up to make the pop, putting an arm out there and dragging down Coke. Well, Ogden, Ogden was on somebody again. He was kind of shoving and getting a little feisty out there. I, I like to see offensive linemen get a little nasty, you know. Ogden comes up, makes a nice block. Defensive players don't like that. Defensive players don't like that. But a better play, better play by Scanlon than what you know Ogden did. <laughs> and the Bison lost a couple of yards on that play, but now the officials walking off. It's odd. And the penalty was charged to Tennessee State. It looked like it may have been offsides. But that's a five-yard penalty. The Bison get a first down at the 26-yard line. James Reese 
head coach of Tennessee State. 32 no years old, young guy, young as ever, I think, the coach for Tennessee State. First and 10 for the Bison. Single setback is Jay Colbert. He'll take the handoff. Beal hits him again. Yeah, Beal is just playing an outstanding game. He, you know, he's a lot like Tracy White. He plays that weak side. He comes down the line extremely fast, and that time in an outstanding play, cutting through the line and making the tackle. I'm on top of Scanlon there. He's making his move. Hands inside. Ah, uh, yeah, that, when you beat a defensive player like that, you know they want to pat you in the face and say it's okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they don't really feel yeah, that way. Yeah, they don't really feel that way. They want to get out. <laughs> but see, Scanlon's not mad because Bill came and made a nice play off the backside. And Bill losing his name on the back of his jersey. They're holding him, I guess. <laughs> Second down. Lyman don't hold, do they, Nate? Nah. Here's Colbert trying to get to the outside line. And look at Bill. Bill's one of the defenders on the other side this time to make the play along with Bryce Smith. We just try, we just try to, as I this line, we just try to reach out and touch, you know. <laughs> and Bill does a good job of reaching out and touching on this play. Right. He fights off the block and is able to squeeze the play back inside. I think that Kramer, the defensive coordinator, feels like he has to keep his team moving because they're not a big team. If they sit in place, then Howard start to lean on them on, on the offensive line and, uh, you know, they make it make, make uh, get a rhythm in the game. The Bison struggling offensively with the football and again dropping may have been another turnover as Clark lost possession of it back at the 20 yard line the first day of taking snaps as a quarterback is you take the snap and you seat it you bring it to your belt buckle and protect the football that time Clark leaves the ball out there and the tackle Vincent just gets a piece of the ball Clark has got to seat that ball and put it on his belt buckle so he can deal it to the back that was Ogden that pulled with Vincent to knock it out of his arm. So now back to punt is Jason Walker after that 14-yard punt by Sanders. Wow. And it's blocked. And that's why they say Walker is not punting the football. He had four punts blocked prior to the day and gets a fifth one block. And, and Sanders will kick the ball in a line drive, but he gets it off in one step. Walker takes a few steps to get it off, and that time it enabled Stevens. And Tennessee State knew that. When they saw Walker come in the ball game, they know we can go after it because this kid takes a long time to get the ball off. Walker, the senior from Arlington, Texas. Sanders will come in from the left side of your screen, up the gap, and Walker brings the ball to him. That's what Stevens did a nice job of coming flat. Instead of going up the field, coming flat, taking it off the foot. Boy, I know what Coach Wilson is going to be recruiting next year. Like some kickers, honors, placeholders, you know. I give these guys a lot of credit. Stevens for running out of kicker and going out his foot. That's coming up in this race. He's, he's, he's feeling pretty he's good pumped. about it. He's pumped. Stevens is the transfer from Northern Illinois. So what you say, what you think of Taylor Fels right now? He's whack, man. That guy's whack. He can't have me. What you saying? <laughs> what he's saying? That's probably what he said. That's what I would be saying. While Jason Walker is forced to contemplate what is going on, and all of a sudden, it was just a couple of minutes ago that we were talking about the fact that these two teams were scoreless. They looked as if they were very evenly matched. Right. But it's funny how a short punt and then a block punt can change the tide very quickly. You know, coaches always talk about how important special teams are. We've seen it here. Howard came in with a lot of things that were trying to disguise. They had Sanders kicking the ball. They went for it on fourth down twice in the red zone. Now they've been exposed, and you see why they've had these problems with their special teams and, and what's going to happen in this ball game as they start to play the, the, the game on their side of the and, field. And the quickest way to get a team to separate like offense, defense, special teams is for the special teams to explode. When they explode, then all of a sudden the defense get the moan. Come on, if the offense do their job, we won't need to punt the ball. Then the offense say, hey, man, y'all need to stop them back up and give us more opportunities. So, that, you know, their head will start to fall if this continues. Yeah, and, and one thing that happens with an offensive coach, and I think we've seen it already with Howard, it is when you don't have the special teams and you don't have the kicking game working, you start to press more with your offense right. and you start to take more chances with your defense. And that's when they start to blitz and that's when Tennessee State was able to hit that play with Karan Key, which is just a, a quick hitter because Howard is trying to force the play with their defense. Well, obviously, very young team for the Howard Bison as they watch some of these big plays go against them. First, 
The touchdown pass by the Tigers. Carlos Wright, a 12-yard in pattern that gave Tennessee State the 7 to nothing lead. And then, of course, there was the blocked punt that came up after that. And, and, and it's just you cannot let the big plays, maybe even if the big plays happen, you can't let them get you down. We're, we're, we're Walker, the punter there. I mean, if they bring him out again, what is he thinking? Now he's going to rush and probably uh, skate the ball off the side of his feet. But, so, what do you, I mean, but what do you do What do you do you to counteract that if you're a coach? What do you say to a young man in that? You regard? pull him to the side and say, hey, we're in a tight position right here. We need you to take it one step, concentrate, get back to the net behind the rest of the players and, and work on it because we do need you to excel right at this point. It, it's way too early in the season to, to think that you're going to give up on them. But right. you, you need to leave them in the ball game and let them work through it and to crush some ball games. That's what college football is. There's no waiver wire to go find a, a guy like Sean Landetta who's 45 years old still out there to kick, <laughs> kick the ball. But, 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 and Sean's still doing it very well. well. Know, but with is. that having been said, gentlemen, there's still a lot of time left in this football game. They're still down 7 to nothing. If they stiffen up here, maybe give up three, they've won the battle. First and 10 now. Ball is at the 20-yard line for Tennessee State. You already lead 7 to nothing. Good pressure there by the Bison. Boy, that looks like Obi Law was the guy who was back there, the outside linebacker. We haven't mentioned him too much. Just a matter of time before he was going to come off the corner with that burst that I talked about in the opening. Got right in Harris's face. And Harris has done a nice job of, of being solid in the pocket. He is right. taking some heat. He's getting hit, but he's throwing the ball from the pocket. That will pay off as the game goes on. So Shannon's club, as you see, 4 of 14 for 49 yards. Not very impressive. And yet, the turnovers by the Bison, the stakes, helping out the Tigers. This time, the pass is complete. C.J. Johnson, the sophomore, who scored, or actually who makes the catch, takes it down to about the 10-yard line. An offensive line, I think, is starting to pick up a little bit more of the blitzes, even though the defense is not blitzing as much. Well, see right there, they're running a the game on your right side there, and they picked it up very well between the All-American Lawrence Smith and the freshman, Alfred Walker. And that time Howard was in the zone coverage, which you don't really expect them to be down here in the red zone. Right. They were in zone coverage, and that gave Johnson a big hole to sit in. For Johnson, the second reception of the ball game. This time to go outside. Mr. Anthony, Mr. Anthony, Great touchdown. Block. Touchdown, Charles Anthony, the freshman. And yet we have another flag thrown, this one at the 13-yard line, around the area where they like to hold jerseys. The big fullback, number 41, can <laughs> run, keep, just laid on him, laid on the defensive back real strong for this touchdown. I, I, I hope it is a touchdown because I know Karan Key will be sick if, if it's a penalty. Right there, your defensive coordinator for Tennessee State, Andre Kramer. He lifted his man up out of the turf. He, he, he <laughs> took him to new heights. That's the game, number 41. Now he's not even. Oh, there's screen. the holding right there. I want to say number 65. Yes, yes. 75. No, it wasn't 75. The center was 65. I don't know. I don't know this kid's name. Here we go. So Coach Reese now. Frustrated, he doesn't like the fact that his team has had more than ample opportunities to, to be out in front by a lot more, and yet it's just been the small little miscues here and there. You know, when you come into a game and you're a little overmatched, and that's how it is. You can only hang around for so long. You tell your team, if we can hang around, we can win. But right now. Tennessee State is starting to build a little momentum. Again, they're playing the, the, the game now on Howard's side of the field. So it's important that, that both teams right now try to settle their clubs down. We saw James Reese, the head coach, who's been on this TSU coaching staff since 1991. He was a fullback for the Tigers. You know that, don't you, George? In his younger days, when he had hair in the middle of, in the middle of his head. <laughs> 
that a crack to my ball hand? <laughs> I think so. Yeah. I'm good looking look at it. I don't see too many cracks in the ball hand. It's nice and smooth. <laughs> good looking out, Donnie Mac. Good looking out. The glass. Oh, and the here comes the pageantry. The glass messing me around. That is good the good pageantry. <laughs> <laughs> that is black college football. <laughs> And they just strut in front of that ba that bison <laughs> band, you know. <laughs> just letting them know. Actually, that's the TSU band they were walking in front of. Just letting them know. We're here to help you out. Third down now and 12. Tigers can still get a first down here, but they're going for the money. Oh! Jenkins touchdown! Patrick Jenkins got behind the defense and scored, but credit Harris with a big time pass. Oh, yeah, because Ch uh, Charles Woodall delivered the leather, and he stayed in the pocket with Charles Woodall coming down the middle and completed a great pass. There was double coverage on Jenkins, and that time from the slot position, just runs a simple corner out with a stop right on the outside, which gives Jenkins the entire corner to work with and this is a this is a secondary that's had some injuries so you got a couple of young guys out there playing and that's Scott the strong safety who gets beat number 25 I'm telling you Shannon Harris stood in there and took a big hit from Charles Woodall Charles Woodall beat the young uh, left guard Alfred Walker off the snap with an inside move and he delivered a blow and Shannon Harris stayed in there and delivered a nice pass. Well, we, we talked about how that's going to pay off for him Wow, as you see right there, nice, nice. And that is an excellent ball. Big Charles Woodall thought he had made the play of the day, but Shannon Harry gets up with the victory. And for Patrick Jenkins, his first touchdown reception of the season. Shannon Harris now has thrown two touchdown passes in this ball game, give him seven for the season. And more impressively, and Donnie, you'll appreciate this one, one interception all year long. Yeah, well, you know what, just when you look at his demeanor, he is a calm quarterback, just threw a touchdown pass, he settled himself down, he settled his, his team down, he's been playing a patient ball game, even though they have been playing a very good ball game, he has, been, he has shown a lot of poise as his team around him is not playing very well. Well, you know, he spent the summer with his uh, godfather, Steve McNair, of the Titans, so I mean, I guess these have baby half fours <laughs> in the face of adversity. Half four, exactly. <laughs> he showed it there because Big Woodall brought the leather, baby, brought, brought the adversity. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> Doug, could you have taken a blow like that? Oh, and got I, up I took too many blows like that. <laughs> That's why you got out early, but you're, but you're exactly right. <laughs> But you know, when you when you drop the dime like that in the end zone for a right. touchdown, you don't feel those those blows at least until tomorrow. Until morning. next okay. morning. <laughs> 14 nothing is our score. The Bison now with three minutes left here in our first half, looking for some room to run, and they may have found it. Still on his feet, and a nice return from our university. And giving him that return was Freddie Turner. And guess who went and got it? Eric Joyce <laughs> went and got him. Well, we talked about earlier about making a decision in the return game, getting your shoulders upfield and running down the field, and that's exactly what he does on this play. Takes off, one look and go. He's going to look left, and he's going to turn it on. And Turner with a 40-yard return, giving the Bison a little life here before the end of the first half. 2.48 left here in the second quarter. As you see Turner one more time. Good blocking by hole. the special team. Good blocking. No hesitation there. Hits no, that no. hole. No indecision as you talked about, Don. And with that, the Bison now in Tiger territory at the 43. Inside handoff as they elect to keep it on the ground. And they give it to their tailback, Jay Colbert. Right up the middle. He kind of fumbled around there with the ball. They got to secure the ball. You know the Tennessee uh, Tigers are ball hawkers. Colbert now with a one-yard carry. Makes it second down in nine. Colbert averaging just a little under three yards per carry. Uh, Don, right here, what would you do? Would you keep it on the ground? Would you take a shot at the end zone? What are some of your thoughts? I, I think they needed to, to go with a conservative passing game. The Tennessee State defense right now is playing a little bit more loose. Take advantage of it and go to the quick pass game. Clark. 
fumbles the football again. And that's the second time in two series that he fumbles in there to drop him is Danny Roberson. Danny Roberson's having a nice game. I mean, he's a good run stopper, but he's showing up on the pass rush, making things happen. I mean, when you get a guy like that that's big and huge, and look at him. He wants to look neat, but you know, he's a defensive line. I'm going to let you sure hang out. <laughs> you know, it, it, and it's interesting to watch a defensive tackle with the kind of penetration right. that he's getting. Usually it's defensive ends, but we're seeing this guy make penetration at the tackle spot, Nate. Well, the coach said he's going to pinch a lot. You know, Coach Kramer said he will pinch, he will move guys around because he don't feel like this offensive line of Howard can stay with the pinches. They don't think he's quick enough. When and you right, say pinching, help some of these people that are watching. I mean, like if you get if, you, if a person's standing right in front of you directly right now, and you take a quick slant to his right or left, that's a pinch. Okay, so in other yeah. words, he doesn't attack the offensive lineman straight right. on. He <laughs> tacks it down. Yes, sir. He tacks it down. Thank you very much, Nate. We'll be right back. It is halftime as Tennessee State leads Howard University. Welcome back. Howard University's marching band on the field. Showtime marching band, they call themselves. The dancing girls, the ooh-la-la -la girls. Band director, John Newsom. Sit back, relax. Time for a little ooh-la-la. She flags, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah, it's party time right here in Naptown. We're about to get this party started off right as we do this thing, how we do it, D.C., every day, every night. But Naptown, I have one thing to ask of you all. Why don't you all come and dance with us?
guess what's next? TSU. Edward Gray, sit back and enjoy a little sophistication from TSU. Let's hear it for the sophisticated ladies! Tennessee State doing their thing. We'll have more coming to you from the Circle City Classic right after this. The RCA Dome halftime here, and it has been all Tigers of Tennessee State 21 to nothing. With that having been said, I would assume that the highlights are all Tiger highlights. Take it away, gentlemen. It started out with the defense, actually, for, for, for Tennessee State. Reese gets the big sack of Clark, and then they come right back with the offense. They come back with LeBron Keith. He's trucking down the line. Boom, he opens the door right there. And then Shannon Harris got his style going. He got first the touchdown, and then came right back. Two looks at the touchdown to right, and then came right back with the corner out to Jenkins. He just dropped his ball in the right high stuff. Then we look here with the open middle still open, but Taylor Webb takes up the middle and goes all the way. Right with a 12-yard touchdown reception, Jenkins with a 21-yard touchdown reception, and Weldon closing out the scoring in the first half with a 26-yard touchdown reception. With those three receptions, that's why the passing yards and the discrepancy, 148 to 43. Rushing yards in favor of the Bison, but they chose to run it late in that first half as opposed to trying to throw the football a little bit more. Penalties, both teams, I'm sure six penalties, too many for TSU, time of possession. TSU able to put 21 points on the board 
with just 10 minutes. Welcome back here to our booth. George Johnson along with Nate Newton, Don McPherson. When you look at those first half highlights, think about it, Big Nate. Tennessee State seemed to do everything right in the last seven minutes of the game. What that's, has impressed you the most? That's due to the fact of the defense. The defense stayed online, kept blitzing. Uh, Walter Reese kept making plays. Eric stayed in the back, held down field pot, and that gave them a chance for the offense to do what they need to do. Meanwhile, Howard University finds themselves in a hole, Don. What do they do here in the second half to kind of pick things up, catch up to this Tigers club? Well, you know, they've, they've changed quarterbacks more than 22 times in the first few games. That's not the problem here. You look at their time of possession, almost 10 minutes more than Tennessee State. They're doing the right things offensively. They just need to get their special teams back in order. Well, keep in mind that in the first half, Tennessee State, they won the kick. They deferred, so they get the football back. We'll be right back with Tennessee State leading by 21. This has been our Southwest Airlines Halftime Report. Travis Coleman, the senior from Fredericksburg, Virginia. Donald Clark started the football game for the Howard Bison, but he's on the sideline now just kind of watching. And Coleman warming up. We just may see Travis here in the second half. But they're going to have to wait because TSU gets the football first. Patrick Jenkins takes it on the 8-yard line and takes it outside the 15-yard line, make it the 16-yard line before being brought down by Mr. Anthony Hart, who has been extremely active all game long. First and 10 TSU. Again, another look at Travis Coleman, the senior. And this is how Travis Coleman has come in the ball game all season <laughs> long. Really in mop-up situations. He has more pass attempts than Clark. It's because he's always coming in when the team is down and they're throwing the ball. Shannon Harris back at quarterback now for Tennessee State in the first half. He was 9 of 20 for 148 yards and three touchdowns. Again, that's Travis Coleman. This is Mr. Harris on first and 10. Balls away, balls and he's away. throwing already. And boy, he had a wide open receiver. Marvin Jones in the flat just overthrew him. Yeah, and Marvin Jones has to read that he's going to get pressure and get his head around a little bit more quickly on that play. Shannon Harris has done an outstanding job of staring into the pressure all day long. Because Rico Walker was bringing the heat. Exactly right. The first half, Karan Key was the leading rusher for TSU. 23 yards on one carry. Harris gained six. Jones had a 17-yard gain and a 16-yard loss. So Marvin really had net one <laughs> rushing. <laughs> Here's the, oh, real nice fake by Harris. Boy, he tucked it, he pulled it, and found his receiver. And it's complete near another first down. Tennessee is really starting to find the rhythm. Uh, that was a nice little play-action pass there uh, to get the ball downfield. Uh, they're settling down, and they're starting to play. And I really like what Shannon Harris did. Great play fake. You see him get the heart there. Oops. But then he just takes something off, the, off, the, off this ball. You know he's running, running that direction. Takes something off of it. Make it an easy ball for Wright to catch. Wright makes the catch good for nine yards. He now has two receptions in the ball game. And that for 21 yards total. Third down and short, and they give it to the big house. Karan Key. Key still running. Key still dragging. Key out to about he the 34. Almost, he almost released that ball there, too. I mean, he's running strong. That was a nice by Benedict, Abisic, and Hilton Horn. The right tackle. The right guard. Karan Key is a big guy. You saw him in the open field, but now you see him between the tackles just running people over. And that's Woodall. He's dragging down the field. Hey, credit Key. He almost lost that football right. twice. Not once, but twice on that run. So the Tigers get the first down. Ball is shy of the 35-yard line. Mark it to 34. Inside handoff. This goes to Jonesy. And Jonesy picks up about two, three yards on the play. They pull the big left tackle. Lawrence, Lawrence Smith right there. Over to the right side. Trying to get something going off the, off the, the run of the big guy, the big All-American. Lawrence Smith. There's Lawrence Smith, the senior from Atlanta. Great feet, great hands, very smart player. An All-American candidate last year. He was second team in the Ohio Valley Conference. This year they expect even bigger things, and as Nate has told you time in and time out, you got a feeling he's on his way to the next level. I hope so. He's a mean kid. <laughs> Again, fake by Harris. Throwing downfield, has a receiver. Yes, his feet trying to get it to the end zone and he steps out of bounds that's cj johnson 
Coach Reese told us yesterday, they said, all he does is just make plays, and a big example of that there. This is an outstanding throw off balance. Watch Harris keep his eyes. He goes with the play fake. He gets his eyes downfield. He'll lose the pressure, steps up, and keeps his eyes down the field. Off balance, throws this ball 45 yards on the money. That was a nice reception by C.J. Johnson. You know, like George said earlier, the coach said he has a feel for the game, and all his teammates call him smooth. 69-yard play for smooth. Harris, defensive pressure, end zone, okay. touchdown. And Anthony Brown, who came into the ball game with no receptions on the season, had one in the first half, and he catches this one, his first touchdown of the year. Hey, great play. That's called mixing it up because Steve Farmer, the starting tight end, is a do-all type guy. So, you know, what better than to throw it to a guy like he did with Batavius Weldon earlier, throw it to a guy that is not expecting to get it. And once again, you talk about Harris keeping his eyes down the field. He's done an outstanding job this entire game after pressure. Kick by Hudak is good. Who died is done kicked it again. Good play fake. He has, he has pulled off three great play fakes on this drive alone. At that time, finding his sophomore from Nashville, Tennessee, Anthony Brown. Second catch of the game. Touchdown. It's 28-0 TSU. A good look at Shannon Harris, who last week threw for 344 yards. This week, he continues to throw hot throw. And Shannon Harris gets a good look at the entire field. Nothing was happening play side. He kept his poise and went backside to Brown, the tight end coming from the other side of the field. I am so impressed with this young man's poise in this ball game. The first half did not go the way they would expect it, expect it to go, and he's kept his poise this entire ball game and really has come back to, to, to throw now four touchdowns in this game. And the reason for that is the offensive line is settled down. But you got, they got two freshmen, one at the left guard, to Alfred Walker and one at the right guard at number 65, Wondell Cooper. And he's a freshman, 6'3", 305. So they're playing with young guys and they're doing a great job. Ryan Wilson back deep. By the way, and here's Wilson going to take it at his 12-yard line looking for some room. And wow, we got a flag as it looked as if his helmet was pulled back. He's still trying to stay up on his feet. And a game return right there for him. He'll get more yards. But back to Harris. He's completed 50% of his passes. Didn't look so good early on, but he's come back to complete 12 of 24 for 221 yards. So he follows up that 344 effort of a week ago with a nice effort here. And we still got plenty of time to go in this ball game. And now onto your football field. There's a new quarterback for Howard University, Travis Coleman, the senior, who comes in having completed just 35% of his passes. But, Don, you say there's a reason for that. It is. He comes in in these types of situations where he is throwing the ball a lot, trying to come back in ball games. And he's a guy who's a little bit more mobile than Clark. He's a little bit more likely to take off. But he's a guy who can make things happen. But when you talk to Steve Wilson before the game, he likes Clark because he keeps saying structure. Clark gives me structure. He's the guy who's going to follow the game plan to the T. With Coleman, you never know what's going to happen. And Clark, you're looking at, completed just three of 16 passes in that first half for 43 yards. Had opportunities to hit receivers, overthrew maybe five, six guys. Exactly. He, he did get his feet settled. He got some pressure early in the first quarter. Never got his feet settled and threw through the ball accurately in the second quarter. Despite hanging on to the football for almost 10 minutes more than Tennessee State, Steve Wilson thinks it's time to make a change and try and spark his team in a different way. Javante Philpott, who was a big-time receiver coming in, has just one catch. Simmons had to make a one-handed grab for his only reception. And Colbert, the back, has the third of three receptions for the quarterback, Clark. But now they're going to go with another one. And Travis Coleman, on the run, completes his first pass of the ball game. And it's caught by his outman, Kevin Simmons, his second reception of the ball game. That's the type of thing you do. He's, he's cold. You need to warm up. So you come and you make an easy pass. But I, I say, why don't you go with Travis Coleman from the start? I mean, you're talking about structure. I mean, there's no structure when you're down by 27 points. The matchup we talked about, not to interrupt you, but the matchup we talked about was Joyce against Philpott. Right. And look at this matchup right here. They are banging here. Oh, that's pro-style banging now. That's pro-style banging. But guess who's covered who? Super glue. Joyce. <laughs> You give the advantage so far in this ballgame to Eric Joyce. Right. And, and, and a good reason, considering that 
Javante Philpott has just one reception. Coming into the game, number three, outstanding. I'll give you his numbers in a second. Oh, Coleman took a pop, stayed on his feet. And that right there was the linebacker, Walter Reese, who got free. Well, I tell you, Walter Reese got free, but he also bounced off of Coleman. He didn't wrap up, <laughs> he bounced off, and Coleman stayed on his feet. Coleman might be talking about that a little bit later on, and Reese, is, his boy, is going to get on him. He let that quarterback bounce off of yeah, him like that. Yeah, he did. He's going to get talked about, but oh, you yeah. know what? That's big-time play, baby. Big-time players make big-time plays. Two big-time plays for Tennessee State. Puts Howard now in a third and ten situation. And Coleman will go back in the shotgun formation. He's completed now 29 of 79 passes on the season. Looking for his 30th reception. And that will be incomplete. It was intended for Tariq Rice. Uh, David, De De Desmond Scandalin just made a nice inside move on Mr. Ogman. Look at that. Straight inside. Ogman shifted out too far. He was thinking he had number 52 there, Bill, but he's really had 56. He got to take care of the inside out. What kind of adjustments do you make when you know they're sending eight and nine guys at the offensive line uh, as a lineman, they as call, an offense? What you do is you, you first rule is block inside out. Second rule is leave the backs in. Right. And, they, <laughs> and they were not in position to do that because right. they had four wideouts on the field and no help in the back. They've been the sending those guys all game, fellas. Patrick Jenkins back to receive the punt. Going to run it down. Takes a Howard bounce and just keeps on rolling. And Jenkins lets it get away from him. Fields it at the 12-yard line. Still on his feet. They call him Peter. They call him Peter. Here comes Peter. Peanut's still on his feet. Up to the 32-yard line. Who was it, Peanut? That's what they call him. Patrick Jenkins. That was dangerous on Patrick Parr. They let it go that far. Then not make sure. See right here. He's looking at it. He's thinking. He's thinking. Okay, get back. Let it go. Let it go. Make up your mind, son. You got to get it and go. And once you get it, you got to make sure you have it. And, and very often when a guy bobbles a ball like that, the coverage team will let up. And that's right. exactly what Howard did and gave Jenkins the whole corner to get out there. 21-yard return for Peanut, Patrick Jenkins, and TSU in good shape. Some of the defensive players for Tennessee State as they are in control of this football game, leading Howard 28 to nothing. And Marvin Jones, your tailback, with the carry. Picks up about four yards on the play. Great job our crew has done here for this football game. All over it. Our defense is just, just moving to the ball, trying to make things happen. They haven't given up. Our defense in there scrapping. They're trying to strip the ball. They're gang tackling. You know, just stay in the game. You never know what can happen. Brian Johnson, the man there to make first contact. Pick up for five yards for Jones. And second down. A little reverse action. Oh, no. They're going to try something. They're going to try something. He's wide open. Big time catch by C.J. Johnson. Andy Dorje with the play on the reverse stops and throws a pass to C.J. Johnson who was all by himself. You know, the conventional wisdom is that Tennessee State's just going to run the clock out, go to run game, so that's what they look like they're going to do. You see the reverse, but the top of your screen is Johnson. He's going to slip into the secondary. There is no one there. Everyone's eyes were in the backfield on the reverse. You know, when you're in pop one of football, they tell the safety, the free safety, just stay back and be the last man counting. Luckily, this guy stayed in between, and he did get back. 45-yard pickup on that play from Durage to C.J. Johnson. Good position for the Tigers as they are now set up at the 17-yard line. That handoff to Charles Anthony who picks up maybe two yards on the play as you see the true freshman from Orlando playing with a broken arm didn't know that the arm was broken broke it in the first week of the season right. it took him a week to find out but he's the leading rusher on this team <laughs> you're laughing at I that laugh, I laugh at guys don't know they're hurt for a week <laughs> that's just going to be from Orlando yeah. Jones is tough he's physical my way on the box here's Harris Going to the outside, looking for his tight end, Anthony Brown. And Anthony Brown all of a sudden becoming a superstar on this offense. Making Had no catches coming in, making, and now they're going to it. Making things happen in the Circle City class. You know you're on TV. You got to make, uh, make the best of every opportunity. You see number 22, the big wrap on his arm as he goes off the field. 
And he is still got that bat on. And that might be one of the big reasons why he's not playing as you take a look at Walter Reese and crew. <laughs> Just let us know who's number one. They're trying to build up the stats. All they thinking right now, hey, you do this game, I do this stuff. You go get some stats. <laughs> so here we now on third down. Great time for Harris. He's going to dump. Oh. And Jonesy couldn't make the play. Yeah, and they're going to call a penalty on Harris for throwing the ball beyond the line of scrimmage. And he kind of got halfway between it and wasn't sure whether or not to make this decision. You know, he's done such a great job. We've talked about him keeping his eyes down the, the field block. and throwing the ball at the last minute. He does a great job of it here and then should have just taken the first down, try to get to the market and slide. That's a quarterback, though, for you, yeah, right? He's, just, he's about to get know, that touchdown. Here it is, right the, here. the quarterback is make the right decision. He's over the line of scrimmage. He has to have that field presence and know where he is on the field. Big, big, big Lawrence Smith just had a super nice block. The offensive line is finally settling down, making things happen. Howard can't get any pressure on this kid. And obviously, Harris very upset as you take a look at that offensive line. Of Alfred Walker and Lawrence Smith, Benedict Gabisi, Hilton Horn, David Clark. No, 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 65 right guard is... 65. Juwan. You, you, throw, you throwing a new right. name in Cooper. there now? Right, that's the right guard. Don't He's ever get a right guard wrong. Is that what you're trying that's to tell me? That's what I'm trying to tell you. Look out okay. for your own. Here's who that. 35-yard attempt. His kick is up, and his kick is good. So Joey Hudak, the freshman from Miami, now on the season, is five for seven. As he connects from 35 yards out, and they leave 31 up. State came into this football game ranked number five in black college football, ranked number 22 in Division One AA. And early on, it looked like the Bison were going to give them a game. But Late in the first half, they opened up with a couple of touchdowns, and here in the second half, continuing as that short kick right there, fielded by Ryan Wilson for Howard, and he is immediately met by several Tiger players. Brian Harris, one of the players involved on that one, as we also have a player now down on the field, threw his helmet off, and he is really hurting. And that looks like that is Ricky Gibbs, the freshman from Miami. I mean, he threw his helmet off his head. This is really hurting, and we hope that it's nothing very serious. He needs to sit still so the trainers can figure out what, it, what exactly is wrong. It looks like he's going to get his right knee that they're starting to work on. Yeah, as you see, Coach Reese looking old. Yes, yeah, sir. Right in the middle of your screen. No one touch, touches him. He just kind of comes down on that knee the wrong way. A young kid of about 230, 240 pounds and come down that knee the wrong way. What's happening? Interesting dynamic. You play all your college career on AstroTurf, and one would assume that, you know, that's a very dangerous situation. I'll bring it back after we go to commercial break. Think about that. You're watching the Circle City Classic here on BET. When you start using that microphone too much, the battery runs out. See what I'm saying? And, right. You know, since they've been calling penalties after penalty, actually it's not been that bad, but TSU eight penalties for 60 yards as Robert, our audio technician helping out. Howard, five penalties for 46 yards. Coleman's pass intended for Miller. And you talk about Steve Wilson. And his coaching staff, he has always had coaches on this staff that have had NFL experience. Fred Dean has been with him the I longest. I played with Fred. And Freddie, of course, played with the Redskins. But Gene yeah. Atkins knew in the defensive From Florida secondary. Area. Yes. Mac Alston and Reggie White. But, I mean, he's had Reuben Carter here before. Uh, he's had Ron Springs, Springs. here before. He, uh, I mean, he's, the guy attracts great talent here to help him coach. 
they got their hands full trying to coach these punts here. Very young club as that pass is intended for Simmons and is incomplete. You know, but Steve Wilson, uh, real quickly also, great NFL playing experience. You almost had a chance to play with him right, at one time, right. he Nate. He left the year before I got there. He left the Dallas. year before yeah. you got there to Dallas, but he was a wide receiver at Howard University, right. went to the pros, right. and Coach Landry turned him into a defensive back, and then he went on to Denver and played over there That's with another Dallas years. guy. That's great years. Played in the Super Bowl. Yeah, and was the son of touchdown Tommy Wilson. <laughs> I'm going straight up. I hear you, George. There you go, Nate. Stop it. Third down and ten. Coleman. Oh, my gosh. Jail quick again. And here comes Walter Reese. Walter Reese came around the corner then. Coming like, like thunder. And when the quarterback went to step up. He comes around the end, uh, gets free, but he goes to step up, and there's nowhere to go. I mean, the, the two defensive tackles are putting pressure. The, look at that. He goes to step up. There's nowhere to step up. It's just confusion. It's a feeding frenzy going on here, ladies and gentlemen. So now, Howard forced to punt again. That's become a reoccurring theme. Sanders set the punt. Back deep is Patrick Jennings standing at about his 32. He's going to let this one bounce too. He let the last one bounce. Let's see what he can do this time. He gets away from one defender. And he's going to get knocked out of bounds at about the 21. And they're going to say late hit. Now that was a late hit. Huh? And that is a good call. All right. Frustration is sitting in on how right now Coach Wilson's got to tell his players, just play, just play, you know. And things will start to happen, maybe not in this game, but you can start to build momentum even in a, in a losing situation. Just test the Dead character ball. of your team. Personal foul. On the white. Take a team. First down. You're talking about testing the character of the team. It's got to be disciplined throughout the game. Don't make stupid mistakes, even if you're way out of the ball game. You want to see if your young players are going to come and step up. Michael Harris is a senior. Right. He should not make this type of mistake. Patrick Jenkins, I mean, I know he's having a nice day, but he should be a little more decisive on his catches and, and dealing with the punts, too. Carry inside. That was Jones coming up to meet him. That punter, <laughs> Mike Sanders. He's trying to make up, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but the last part was nice. I think it was yes, right it was. at 40 yards. So he's, he, he's starting to focus and pay attention to the little things and technique of punt. Again, he would tell you he's a linebacker first. Punter second. He is a starter. Here's Harris. Pass is complete. And his receiver still on his feet. Football picked up by Keith Weber. And Weber. And Karan Key trying to grab hold of him and finally slams him down. The pass was complete to Ron Jackson, but Jackson lost the football. Weber picked it up, and Howard now has possession. And you have to, you know, even though you're winning and you're starting to have fun and you're relaxing, like right here, great protection, super protection, nice pass. He jumps up and get it, makes a, a great grab, and he fights to get away. But then he's, he's got to remember, keep that ball tight. I mean, you know, keep it tight. Don't relax. It's, it's still a game to be played. You have to finish the game. Ron Terrius Robinson was the man who knocked the ball free. And there, there's definitely a lesson here for Howard. When you look at the last play with the, the, the stupid penalty out, out, out of bounds, now you see what happens when you hustle throughout the game. Right. Don't give up. Right. Here's Weber trailing the play. He's hustling. He gets the ball and turns. Great point. First and ten now for Coleman. Oh, nice inside move. And Coleman looking up the middle. And again, throwing it into traffic. Well, you, you got two receivers standing in the same spot. That ball went through through four hands of two Howard receivers because they were right behind one another. What do you, who do you blame? Is that receivers? I would assume that coaches don't draw it up that way. That's receivers. They have a depth that they have to be to be that they have to get to, and they have to coordinate that. And it, that is receivers. They have to know where each other are. And again, no this is a team that's getting lazy yeah, late in the ball up. game. They're way out of this ball game. They're getting lazy and not doing the little things right. Second down and ten. Cole. Cole. 
looking downfield. Again, had a receiver getting past the defense and overthrows him. But once again, that comes with not being able, I, I'm quite sure he don't get most of the snaps in practice. So he comes into mop-up situations, and the time is not going to be there. They start, it's like the first quarter for him. It's starting all over again. Well, an interesting story. Sorry to interrupt you, but interesting story. Two defensive coordinators on this field, Andre Kramer and James Garland. Garland on your left, Kramer on your right. Kramer in his third season on the staff. Garland in his first season with Howard. He was working with Hampton University last season. And both of them know each other extremely well. I'll explain after this play. Third down and 10. And we've got another whistle on the field. As for Kramer, he was a standout at Tennessee, Garland at Howard. Before that, they were high school teammates at Northwestern High School in Baltimore. Literally friends for life and have memories they'll never forget. Not only is he a close friend and we grew up together, he's the godfather of my son. Uh, when we're in Buffalo together, you know, uh, my wife was pregnant at the time and he was the godfather. And uh, i tell you what's really special is that when we do get old, like you said, we'll have so many stories to go back and talk about from the time we were 10 all the way through high school, college, and, and now as coaches. He's a great man. I love him and his family. I'm the godfather to his son, and uh, whom I'm going to wind up recruiting in about in about 10 years, if I can steal him from him. <laughs> That's Kramer's son, Nico, they're talking about, who's just six years old right now. They said they got their inspiration from their high school coach, James Ward, who just passed recently. He was the head coach at Buffalo and brought them both in. And they were together and played for him when they were in high school at Northwestern in Baltimore, and then he brings them together as coaches. And it's the kind of story in football, in sports, that you just want to remember for years and years and yeah. years. And it's just a great relationship between this man right here, James Garland, and that man right there, Andre Crane. I know that feeling because I played with my brother. We grew up together, play, we played together, played, you know what I'm saying, high school ball together, went into the pros. So, you know, I know that feeling. Nothing to my you know, that, that's the, the great thing about college football. Ball. So many people talk about the pros and, and how they stop playing for the love of the game. You see these two guys who have been around the game all their lives and they're out here competing on the field as coaches because they love the game of football. Again, they've dedicated this game to the memory of their former coach, James Ward, and one of that, his family know their thoughts are out to him. Meanwhile, here's Carlos Wright on the punt return and a big time return as he brings it back into Howard territory down by the 37 yard line. So James Garland's defense is going to have to get it up. And, and you saw Wright come up with a little bit of a limp and watch it right here. He, he, he made a move. Oh, he almost breaks his own ankle. He got up with a little bit of a hobble. He's trying to make a, a real hard move right there on the white part of the Colt helmet. The turf is a little bit more sticky in that painted area. That's right where he makes the move, and that's why his ankle stuck a little bit more. Now, hey, they say he makes that patented move all the time. It's especially. Mike Sanders with a 41-yard punt. Wright returns it 30 yards. Here's Karan Key, the big fullback, taking it down to about the 36-yard line. You know, you would think that uh, uh, Marvin Jones and Charles Anthony would be having a big day, but uh, Karan Key is the one that's punishing this Howard's defense. Just a matter of time before James Reese is going to have to start pulling in starters out of the ball game. There's still plenty of season left. In it. He's still got Harris throwing the football, trying to throw the screen to the other side of the field. And he hits Karan Key with the play, but Howard's defense was not fooled on that play whatsoever as Damian Walker is there to make the play, but we do have a flag sitting at the 43-yard line in the backfield. You get a sense of how big Key is because Damian Walker just wrapped around one leg and held on to him. <laughs> and Walker's 285 pounds. As for Key, he's 5'10", 230. That's right. All legs. <laughs> A minute 24 left here in the third quarter. Tigers in control, 31 to nothing. George Johnson, along with Don McPherson and Nate Newton. Junior. Junior. Junior, too. Pops was Nate? Yeah. Pop 
pops was George. Okay. Jefferson, oh, that is? No, Johnson. Okay. My no. pops is listening. I don't disrespect my pops when he's listening. No, sir. Okay. He looked out for me, man. Made sure I had draws on me. Ooh, Made sure I rubbed every day. But so, Mr. Johnson, your son just got real salty. <laughs> CJ oh, Johnson play. with a catch. And now the Dyson going to get salty as Johnson makes the play and gets the first down inside the 20 yard line. Talking about Marvin Jones, he just made a big time block down the field. Staying with the play all the way down the field. Nice cut back inside across the grain. Watch the left side of the screen. Number 30 is going to come in with a big block right there. Boom. That's the hustle that you want the entire game down the field. That's why Tennessee State is up in this ball game 31-0. They are hustling all over the field for 60 minutes. The ball is down at the 20-yard line. I unofficially have that as a 21-yard pickup. Johnson again with the catch and trying to make a move on the defensive back, Chad Scott. Scott drags him down, but not until he picks up. Looks like close to another first down. Now, actually, he's going to be a couple of yards shy. You know, there have been some bright individual performances all day long for Howard. And, you know, despite the score, you have right. to find some bright spots. I think that the secondary has done a nice job of tackling in the open field. That was a great play by Scott. You see I'm trying to find something positive to say about the Howard Bison right now. George, did you attend school there? <laughs> I'm just 17, 16, 15 seconds and counting here in the third quarter. I'm ready to sing. I'm so glad I went to Howard U. Last play of the third quarter. They hand it off inside to Marvin Jones. And Jones running into a host of bison. And that'll do it for our third quarter. So after three quarters of play here at the RCA Dome in Indianapolis, it's been all Tigers, Tennessee State, looking to go to 4 and 0 and look in perfect position to do so as they lead this one 31 to nothing. We'll be back. This portion of today's game is brought to you by Rocky Mountain Coal Coolers Light. here at the RCA Dome here. Southwest Airlines presentation of black college football here on BET. As you get a look at the RCA Dome. Circle City Classic, the 18th Circle City Classic. An event that just makes tons of money for the city of Indianapolis. They were talking about it earlier today. Made $20 million last year for the city. Looking to make more this year. As Harris on third down, forced out of bounds at the eight-yard line, and he had to get to the five for a first. And he's going to be short. That actually is the initial line of scrimmage. Actually, no, he had to get to the ten for a first down, so he gets the first and be first in goal. He made a nice move to escape and get outside of the pocket because he was pressure coming up the middle. So he made a nice move to get out there and make something happen. That's what you look for in a quarterback of that caliber. He passes, he looks to make the pass first, but if he has to, he has the legs to run. Yes, he does. So single setback now is Jonesy, and they're going to give it to him. Marvin trying to get to the outside. Oh, he goes ahead. Tracy goes on one down the line. He was almost buried with Jones from the snap of the ball. Tracy White sniffed that play out. That's what they call sniffing the play out when you're there before the running back. See, the NCAA has now stepped up into our booth right now. Frank Rose of the NCAA used to work with us back in the day. I want to say hello to him and welcome him back. Up here, now out here in Indianapolis with the NCAA. You know we have all kind of questions for you. NCAA questions. Obviously. What, no, what about he's this running halo out. thing? He's running out, see? Y'all want to know out. about this halo thing where the, the punter <laughs> can't get tapped. You know what I'm saying? I want to know about that. Can we get this guy a mic, a stick, or something? <laughs> <else? laughs> Let's speak out against this, these, these uh, soft uh, rules that they make to protect bomber punt returners. It's part of the game to get here. It's my homeboy from Pittsburgh. Worked many years here at BP. <laughs> So now here it is, 14.30 and counting in the fourth quarter. TSU with a first and goal. 
They got a ways to go. Harris dumps it. Key drops it. He was looking to open the door again, man. He was looking to open the door, but he just, he just didn't catch that rock. And you're going to get a late hit call here on Damian Walker taking the shot. Shannon Harris late. You talk about the mistakes in the ball game. You talk about the discipline of Howard. Late in the ball game, you cannot make these mistakes. You can't. You just can't. It. And you don't expect it from that young man right there. It was on Tracy White. No, it was, I believe it was Damian Walker. Okay. Run for the passer. On the defense. After this, the first down. You know, I remember when I, was, I used to play college ball, you know, we, we used to catch the bus. You know, we didn't, we didn't fly like, you know, Don did in Syracuse. Boy, that, this would be a long bus ride back to the crib after whooping like this. And that, and that bologna sandwich just doesn't taste quite as good. <laughs> no, 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 we, we be dealing with the church in three pieces, you know. I, I always hope that guy got two breasts and a, and a leg, you know what I'm saying? He's so used to getting that mad turkey. You can't stop with the bird, can you, big boy? First and goal, balls at the nine. Still looking for more. And I mean, he rifled that pass in. Looked like the pass was intended for Ron Jackson. Incomplete, makes it second. Jeremy Hope wish you would have kept that one. He wish you would have had his head up because it went right to him. Here you go, drop it back. Nice protection. He throws a little bit behind him, and Jeremy Hope saying, oh my God, a chance to make something happen. Yeah, so often the DB thinks the pass is going to be complete in front of him. He's not looking through the receiver for the football. And Ron Jackson has a little limp. Came in the third leading receiver on the club. So here's Harris this time inside handoff, and it goes to the young man, Charles Anthony. He's the type of guy who don't take a one play, he'll break something in a split second. Charles Anthony was a, was a senior in high school last year, rushing for 1,379 yards at Jones High School in Orlando. He's here at the big level and he's, getting it done. He's going right up the middle there, off the right side, behind Ju Juwan Cooper and Benedict Abisi, making a nice run. Anthony, that's a nine-yard touchdown run, and that's his second rushing touchdown of the season. Charles Anthony giving his club more breathing room. They're up 38 zip for nine yards. And that's why our score is 38 to nothing. As you see, Anthony right there with the handoff as Tennessee State also has come into the ball game with a brand new quarterback. And you can see right there, I talked about the young man, Miller, who had quit in the pass pattern that last play. I got a feeling Steve Wilson saw that and pulled him aside, and that's why he's talking to him right now. Kenny Irby is now into the game, a freshman. A transfer from Marshall University from Dale City, Virginia. You know, when you're playing in a game like this, They'll go and watch film, maybe uh, Sunday they'll watch film. You know, if I'm coach, I put on the first quarter, and then when this first quarter is over with, I just say, all right, fellas, that's the end of the game. But, you know, some way you have to stop the nightmare. I mean, going over the bad after bad after bad can't be a positive. So if, if you're playing in the season and your record's one and three, one and four, you're going to have to start looking at the bad and start making improvements to get to the good. Lamar Price. But that last carry, as Weldon makes the catch, is driven out of bounds after picking up a first down. So Irby has come into the game and picked up right where they left off as he completes his first pass attempt. And, it, and it's so great to see these young quarterbacks here at Tennessee State getting an opportunity. Irby gets an opportunity and throwing a nice pass down the field. Many people understand who understand the situation going on in football across the land that black quarterbacks in, in college football and especially now in the pros have emerged to be commonplace in professional football. And the man who started it all came from Tennessee State, Joe Gilliam, a great quarterback here at Tennessee State. And I'm a beneficiary of, of the path that guys like Joe Gilliam 
and, and Doug Williams after him, guys who came from historically black colleges in the 60s and the 70s who were able to play quarterback here like quarterbacks, stand in the pocket, throw the football, and be thinkers. And it was those guys who paved the way for the Donovan McNabb and the Dante Culpepper's guys who are coming now from white colleges, from places like Syracuse wow. and, and Colorado and, and, and Central, Central Florida. They came first from historically black colleges, and it is a tribute to Joe Gilliam and Tennessee State. And if you look on the back of their helmets, you'll see JG, because earlier this year, we lost Joe Gilliam. One of the great quarterbacks, Jefferson Street, Joe Gillum, they called him, who went to Pittsburgh Steelers and was a starting quarterback with them. We also don't want to forget James Harris, who also Absolutely. was a pioneer who went to Grambling and played for the Rams and was a starter. He now works with the Baltimore Ravens as Mr. Anthony is on the loose, not a quarterback, a running back, and doing a job. And I guess he figured if I'm going to take out the Bison, I might as well take out their band, too. <laughs> that's right. You know, that's Orlando Jones at his finest, baby. The deuce of that Athletes, not just myself, Nate knew, taking it to another level. And this kid with a cast. Didn't know his arm was broke. They had to say, son, your arm is broke. Can we put it in a cast? He said, okay, if that's what you need to do, but give me the ball. And he has a bright future with this team, as you can tell. I mean, if they're going to rely on this kind of running for the next three years, I mean, he's going to be sensational. Great block by us. Line. I mean, it's starting to open up. Uh, Howard is starting to lose their defense, uh, momentum on defense. And this uh, Tennessee State line is starting to take over. 28-yard carry for Mr. Charles Anthony as Irby is sacked in the backfield by Keith Weber. And for Weber, that's his... He now has two and a half sacks on the season. We talked about the fact that he makes plays behind the line of scrimmage. I mean, when you talk about production here in this football game, second half, it's been all Tennessee State. The Bison have been unable to move the football 10 yards, gentlemen. 10 yards of offense in the second half for the Bison. TSU, 266, well on their way to their average of over 400 yards per game. And early on, the Bison defense had stopped them. Here's Anthony. Once again, getting in the back, Keith Weber. So the word I'm getting, 440, four yards that is, unofficially, for TSU. And they averaged 417 coming in, so reaching and surpassing their average. Uh, it really, really seems like Howard just somewhere in the second quarter realized that they weren't going to get it done when they were denied. And ever since then, they've just stopped playing, especially offensively, they've just stopped playing hard. Third down, make it 13 for Irby. I think the defense is still trying to give it their all, but absolutely right now the, the talent of Tennessee engine. is starting to take over at the skill position. Irby takes a shot, Irby throws a touchdown! Batavia Batavia Weldon with his second touchdown reception of the ball game. That one good for 20 yards. Give the young quarterback, Irby, a lot of credit for standing in the, in the pocket. Usually you see a young guy with happy feet. That time he stayed there with pressure coming in his face. Two white shirts in his periphery. He keeps his eyes down the field and throws a nice toss to the end zone. Uh, yeah, Batavia Weldon is having a great day. I'm telling you, he's the type of guy that goes in, does all the dirty work, runs a nice little route into the oh, corner. Boom. That's a player, y'all. That's a player. Weldon with the 19-yard touchdown reception. And TSU with 7.53 left in the football game. In the football game, Nate. Yes, sir, it is. It's 45 now. A sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia, came into the game with two receptions, has added three of those to his cause, and along with that, two touchdowns. Last year, he caught 21 passes. He really has picked it up in this one. Oh, Big yeah. old smile on the sophomore's face. Yeah, when Feels I was, good when you yeah. take it to the house twice, huh? Yeah, when I was down there visiting him this past week, man, he always come into the office, you know, asking coaches, can, coach, can I get a tag of ball? Coach, you got to do something, son. He said, I will. Throw me the ball. <laughs> <laughs> he said that with you around him, too. Yeah, man. man. Yeah, so you know I'm going to bring it on the ass and make something happen. Well, he has. <laughs> So 
So as this thing starts to wind down, you think about TSU. Next week, they take on a SWAC opponent, Mississippi Valley State, before they start getting headed into their conference play in the Ohio Valley Conference. As the Bison off the return, Turner's return, hit the football at the 34-yard line. We'll talk about Howard and their future when we get back. Teeth Annual. Circle City Classic between Howard University and Tennessee State. There's your trophy. It goes to the winner of this football game. I'm sure one of those trophies also for the MVP. We still got plenty of time left in this one. I mean, still 742 left. Right. I mean, do you have you have an MVP already yes, set? Yes, I do. You come up for the overall game? Yeah. You better have a flag with some pictures. Okay. Danny Roberson. Roberson. Yes. The Bison try the inside, the interior of the Tigers defense. Great history, nearly 17 years, or nearly 1 million fans. 50,000 plus the last 13 years. Averaged over 54,000. Another penalty charge to Howard. Steve McNair in 1991 threw for 433 yards. They had six overtimes in that a and Hampton game. I was right. here for that one. Right. And you knew Florida a and was going to score every time they got the ball, but you didn't know Hampton would. It was a great football game, but that was before the overtime situation where you had to go for two, and we just kept watching kick after kick after kick. <laughs> and but it, it was a great, great time. Have since changed the rules. Yes, absolutely, because of that game right, right there. And, and we have over 51,000 here today, so... We're consistent with the crowd. 14 straight years, over 50,000 people at the Circle City Classic. You, thought, you talk about the, the economic boom that it brings to this town. Absolutely. It was a boom here last night, and I'm sure it's going to be another boom tonight as people are out and about here well, in the Circle they City. They sure aren't in here anymore. <laughs> That's they right. sort of made their way outside. Take a look at the remaining schedule for the Bison. Oh, I got 11 white. And I mean, next week they have homecoming. They take on Benedict. But then it's a and T. That will not be an easy game. And Mo has that Norfolk State team playing a lot better as we'll come back to the schedule in a second. Pass is complete out in the flat for the Bison. Jamil Jackson makes the catch. Then it's South Carolina State and Willie Jeffries Club, always a very solid team. They'll be coming up to Green Stadium. Bethune Cookman has a young man by the name of Super playing quarterback who is absolutely super. He's not super, he's super. And then Dell State out in Dover on November 17th. Out in Dover. Dover, Delaware. Home of the Hornets. Hey. Hey. Clock continues to roll as we are under six minutes left here in this football game. We get a good look there at the are. freshman, Jamil Jackson. It's now third down and seven for the Bison. Nice block. And rolling to his left and trying to throw one of the toughest passes to throw in all of football. Moreno's pass is incomplete. That'll bring up a fourth down. I know Moreno glad to be in the game. He, he playing, but you can tell, man, they just like, they, they giving him plays, throw to this play. And, and he just happened to be out there. I mean, watch, he just takes off. Great block by the fullback there. He took it away for a while. Yeah. He just throwing it. Look, he just happened to put his pants up. Running around. <laughs> Got his Jamaica funk girl. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Man, this guy's having fun. Tyus forced the quick pass. He's back to receive the punt now. There's Kevin Hollis. And this is the time, folks, when they're going to start bringing in a lot of unfamiliar faces as they mop things up here at the Circle City Classic. That ball bounces at the 36-yard line and is down. We'll be back with more. Circle City Classic starts to wind down. Well, it's been all TSU. <laughs> Look at the helmet. You know, they, they scream at you. They say, talk, George, talk. And they don't know what to say when it's 45 to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, boy, I know what you see. You can say Marvin Jones is still coming downhill, running about 90 miles an hour. Jonesy picks up the first down. Let's take a look at TCU, or TSU, excuse me. Their remaining schedule, Mississippi Valley State from the SWAC is next up. 
and Tennessee Martin. And these, these teams after that, and we'll go right back to that in the second, first and 10 for the Tigers. Ball is at the 47-yard line. Irby hands it off inside again. Looks like Jonesy with the carry. Back to that schedule as they get into the Ohio Valley Conference in the thick of it. Tennessee Martin, Eastern Illinois, Murray State, Tennessee Tech, Eastern Kentucky, and then they close things out with the ball game they were supposed to play that we were going to do, the Southern Heritage Classic, and that's Jackson State, and that'll be on November 22nd. And I know they were waiting for some sunshine, but it's gonna be a little colder now down in Jackson when they play that football game. But that takes on a different significance because those two teams seem to be heading Absolutely. towards a big time clash. Yeah. JSU is playing real good. A little bit, there's a little bit different story if they had played earlier in the year. Absolutely. And there again is Jones. And when you talk about the significance, Jackson State ranked fourth in black college football. Right. Ten Tennessee State is ranked fifth. So if they keep going on the course they're going, that could be a magnificent contest. And I know BET would like to take advantage of that situation. Yeah. Meanwhile, we'll be coming your way with the Magic City Classic. That's down in Birmingham. And I gotta tell you, you folks. You think they like football down in Alabama? I mean, you just walk in that state, <laughs> you just smell football. You smell some ribs, too, bro. They be barbecuing <laughs> yes, and tailgating. Oh, Everything comes back to ribs. Yes, they done. do. Uh, I mean, I'm just, you know, you know hey. We're I wake little. up thinking about <laughs> breakfast. You were good. I place. eat breakfast thinking about lunch. <laughs> I devour lunch for that come on to consume dinner. Thank you. <laughs> Went to dinner with Nate last night, and they said, "How should I fix your plate?" He said, "Well, just make it heavy." <laughs> <laughs> Only man go to windows and say, "Give me a number level." They say, "We don't have that. two number fours and a three. <laughs> <laughs> ah, very good, Dave. Very good. Third down and one now for Tennessee State in the I formation. And they're going to hand it off to the deep back. Look like Jones and Damian Walker hitting. Jones getting a little bounced feisty. off him and got the first down, it looks like. It's getting a little feisty in there. Everybody's getting a little tense. You know, Howard, Howard defense is trying to play as hard as they can play, trying to keep their heads up. Yeah, feisty time is over with now. It's just, it's well, time. You know, it's frustration time. Bro. I know, but it's time to play. If you're Howard, just play brother-in-law and get out of here with some dignity. <laughs> yeah, the dignity is <laughs> going I'm, too. I'm sorry, sir. Thank you. I'll, you know. What do you want to run now? What would you like to do now, exactly? Tigers pick up their 22nd first down of the game no, 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 to no, Howard's no. eight. Well, the one thing I do know is one guy from Howard I know hasn't given up. He's still up in the booth with us, going strong. And that's George Johnson. All right, to the snap. Ball start. Runner offense. He got first down. Well, we're happy to have George here. He had a busy week. We're lucky to even get him to Indianapolis. He's been in, he's been in uh, on the East Coast with, with Michael Jordan all week. Down in Wilmington, North Carolina. Down in Wilmington. And opened up camp. And let me just say this to you, fellas. Money looks good. Money looks real Money good. being Michael Jordan. Uh, that's money. Okay, now you can call him what you want. I call him money. He's always been cash money. But so what, thanks to the zone defense, it, that, don't, that means he well, has not. And he, he has, has that jumper. Hard. He'll take that jumper on you. Okay. But, you know, the thing that's going to happen is Mike is just going to want this team to stay in the game. Because, as you know, when his last couple of years, when he was with right. the Bulls, they won several games, 88 to 86, right. 87, 88. The, the thing is, is that Mike's going to be the go-to guy down at the end. And more importantly, he's got a lot of young players there. Courtney Alexander and Richard Hamilton, and they're going to learn a lot playing with number 23 making his second comeback. So is he going to be number 23 or going to be 45? He's going to be number 23. Let me, let me ask you a question. You had a chance to spend some time, time with him. What's his intention? You talk about the young players. Is he going to come back for a year, help these young players get back in the group? Or is he talking about making a commitment to be with this team and try to take them to a championship? He has signed for a two-year deal. I mean, they got him for two years. And, and what, realistically, what does he think they can accomplish? Two years with him on the court. Well, again, I, I think, you know, Mike is not worried about, you know, hands in, hands in. what people are the expectations. It seems like he's, when he says he has an itch, he wants to scratch his itch. That pass was That's incomplete. Right. Yeah, pass interference. Looks like it's pass interference, another pony against the Bison. But again, back to, to Jordan. 
says he has an itch. He wants to scratch it. Wants to come out. He's just tired of sitting on the couch. That's what this boils down to. As he said, he's getting tired of playing basketball at the YMCA. He wants to raise the level of his competition, and that is why he's in the league, considering he's the greatest player that ever laced up a pair of Nikes. But you on the defense, spot foul, first down. But you look at that, I'm like, if you're not going to stay there over a long period of time and really exactly. groom these guys, exactly. why, uh, scratch your itch back in Chicago. I mean, well, uh, again, go out, go out with field somewhere and scratch your itch. Your you point know? is well taken, but again, these kids are going to learn so much. In, in fact, Courtney Alexander but, told me, he says, I've already learned more than I could possibly Right, how to deposit your money over to his bank for well, Nike, right? Right, right exactly, because <laughs> if, you, if you look at Chicago when, when Jordan left, yeah, they may have learned a lot, but how much did they win at the left? Thank right, you. right. Well, again, you can't really blame Mike for that situation until Jack Jackson left, and Mike had told you that he wasn't going to want to leave in the first place if Phil Jackson had stayed. And so with Phil leaving and Jerry Krause obviously going in another direction, he decided to clean house at that point. Right. And Mike did not want to sit there for that situation, I would guess. No veteran would want to do that. But it's and still the same situation once you look at it. Even though it's, it's he made the team, even though he got his own own, own coach, he hired his own coach and right. then fired himself from you know being a general manager. But come on. I mean, I love Mike, greatest right. player ever to play the game, but hey, scratch that itch somewhere else. Again, like Mike said, he's just out to play ball, and if people want to make a big deal out of him, just come down and hoop it. And this team, again, will benefit from the fact that he's with them. I don't know how many wins they'll get. I don't know if they'll make the playoffs. Anthony picked up his loose ball, still on his feet. This kid is and tough. getting close to he another first down. Nose. Made a nice move inside to keep that clock right. running. You see that line judge winding that arm. You know, uh, My Michael Jordan, love him. Everybody, you know, best best to you, Mike. I thank you for inviting a lot of your golf, you know, games <laughs> after the season, everything. You know, but uh, stay with the kids longer than two years. Really help them. I don't know if he well, he, he, he probably will still be with the organization right. after those two years off. I would assume that he's not going to come back. And you know how much value this organization now has with him coming back to play. Right. Tickets are selling out. I would assume he'll come back and he'll still be with them when he's done playing. But it is an interesting dynamic. He's got some young kids and he will help them out a whole lot. And third down situation, Charles Anthony off the pitch is going to be short of the first down. And, and you know he donated his million dollars Absolutely. to the, to the re relief deal, you yeah, know. To the relief fund and the, the victims of the, the terrorist acts. Right. So, but, so it's not about the money, obviously. No, no. He you want to scratch the edge, you know, but Mike, you can throw a little bit of that my way to the scratch, you know, right? <laughs> You don't want to make a comeback? You know, it's very interesting. The other day I was watching NFL films, right. and they did a special on Fran Tarkington. And Tarkington looked in that camera and he said, I'm 54 years old, and I still want to play football. I know they didn't kill me, but I feel it. I want right. to play. And there was a passion in his eyes that no matter how old he got, he still wanted to play. And, I was and if Warren there. South would have met him right then, the fire would have died. So there's Steve Wilson as this one comes to an end. Tennessee State Tigers win this one over the Bison, 45 to nothing. Nate, Don, and myself will wrap it up when we get back. 45 nothing. Our next game, Alabama State, Alabama A&M. Next up, Comic View on BET. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Survival of the